Hello guys this is Saruto Uchiha Storm here and welcome to my channel today I am doing what if Naruto was a demon fox and was sent to fairy tale please like and subscribe to my channel. Chapter 8. I don't know what you mean, Leon said as she looked at the fairy tale mages with a confused expression. What do you mean you don't know? Lucy asked as she put her hands on her hips. The fairy tale mages and Er, who was wearing Gray's shirt, were standing in front of the mages who wanted to free Deliora. As I said, I don't know, Leon replied, looking them in the eye. I've never heard of the village before, and the moon drip spell was only used to melt ice, not turn people into devils. How do we know you're not lying? Natsu asked, crossing his arms. They're not, said Fox, who was already wearing his cape, hiding his tails, Karama above his head. If the moon drip was the cause of the village turning into devils, then Leon's group should have changed as well. You three would also be devils if the moon drip is the cause. Lucy, Gray, and Natsu widened their eyes when they realized that what Fox was saying made sense. Fox walked towards Leon's group, causing them to look at him warily and fearfully. After all, this was the man who defeated the monster Deliora. Can you answer me a question? He said in a polite tone. Yes? Leon asked, wondering what the question is. Did any of the villagers come to the ruins? He asked him. Leon and his group looked at each other, shaking their heads. No villagers made it to the ruins, Leon replied. As I said, we didn't even know there were people here. I see, that makes a lot of sense, Fox said as he backed away and started walking towards the village. Thank you for your cooperation, Leon San. You are free to go. What most of them said in a confused voice as Fox walked away from them. Only Urza and Ur seemed to realize what he meant. You are free to go, Fox repeated, addressing the Leon group. You can get off the island and start over now that Deliora is gone. To start a restaurant or something. Go do it and do whatever you want. Oh, and please don't mention anything that happened here. I'd rather keep my involvement a secret. Before they could ask what he meant, the shadow below him expanded toward his comrades, and er, and swallowed them, surprising them. The group stared into space with wide eyes, wondering what happened. At the emergency village the villagers set up, the group appeared from the shadows, with Fox, Urza, and Ur standing while the rest fell to the ground, feeling unbalanced and dizzy, though Natsu was worse off, with him pale and ready to throw. Dot. Up. What was that? Lucy asked as she and Gray struggled to their feet as Happy helped Natsu up. Fox walked around the village, surprised to feel that the villagers had left. That's strange, the villagers are gone. They are, Urza agreed with narrowed eyes, preparing to attack. Were they attacked when we left? Dot one of them is coming, Fox said, turning around. The rest followed him and saw a lone villager running towards them. There you go, she exclaimed in amazement. You won't believe what just happened. She hurriedly led the wizards towards her village. When they got there, they were shocked to see the village that was melted by the repaired acid. In fact, it seemed that he had not been harmed. All the villagers looked at her house in amazement while the wizards looked surprised. What happened? Lucy asked in wonder as she looked around her. The last time she saw the town, everything melted. It's like everything went back in time. Back in time. Natsu mused, narrowing his eyes as he detected a familiar scent. I feel some magic left over, Fox commented as he looked around the place, and it felt familiar. Anyway, we discovered your problem. What are you talking about the village elder with the long earlobes? We ask you to destroy the moon so we can be human again. Yes, that's true, Fox said with a nod. But there was one thing that didn't seem right. Yes, Urza said, walking beside Fox and walking ahead of the villagers. Leon Sand said that he has been on this island for three years, using moon drip. A beacon like that would be very suspicious after that. Urza Sand, be careful, Fox called out as Urza stepped on a booby trap. Kya, she screamed as she fell into the hole. Wow, even Lucy's trap was fixed. Happy exclaimed in amazement. Urza said, Kya, like a girl. Natsu exclaimed in amazement. That sounded nice, Gray commented. No, she's going to kill me. Lucy cried in panic as Ur stared at them with blank eyes. Lol. Karama just laughed as Fox helped Urza out of the hole. After what happened to you, he continued to her as if she hadn't fallen into a trap. Why didn't you investigate the ruins for the last three years? B. Because, by tradition, the old man answered nervously. Those ruins are sacred and we are not allowed to go near them out of respect for tradition. Given the circumstances, I would find it hard to believe that you didn't try to investigate due to tradition, Urza said accusingly, causing the villagers to break a sweat. Could it be that every time you try, you can't? Fox guessed, making the villagers look at him in shock. 
W. How did you know? One of them asked. Yes, we try to investigate the ruins, but every time we try, we end up back in the village. I see, that confirms it, Fox said with a nod before looking up at the moon. Well then, let's destroy the moon. What? Lucy, Natsu, Happy, and Gray exclaimed as Fox and Urza stood next to each other, looking at the moon. This could be interesting, Ur said with a smile as he looked at the two wizards. Wait, are you really going to try? Lucy asked incredulously. That's impossible, even for you too. Just watch and learn, Fox said as he and Urza faced the purple moon. Ready, Urza-san? Yes, I am, she said with a nod as her armor glowed. She wore gold and blue armor that features a barbaric appearance and is adorned with numerous fur trims around the joints of the armor. The armor is also complemented by ornamental blue stripes on each piece of armor and golden animal ears with a blue stripe on each ear. The breastplate features a four-leaf clover like medallion over the neck of the armor and displays an ornate blue cross over its abdomen area. In her hand was an extravagant-looking spear, steel blades adorning the golden center with red ribbon-like decorations. The back of the posts features a thick gold stud with a flat silver surface. Will you help me, Fox San? she asked. Why not, he said with a shrug as he gathered chakra into his left hand. When you are ready. Are they really going to, one of the villagers asked in amazement. We will finally be human again, one of them exclaimed hopefully. Ah man, this is going to be amazing. Natsu exclaimed with a wide smile. They're going to destroy the moon. There's no way we can top that. Happy said nodding. There's no way they can do it. Lucy exclaimed at them. And why do you want to end up destroying the moon? Clever. Fox asked as he crouched down on the ground. On my mark, Urza said as he pointed at the moon, ready to launch the spear. Ready, set, go. Urza threw the spear into the sky with all her might, a machine cone appeared at the tip. When she was in the sky, Fox jumped into the air, leaving a small crater on the ground. When he was close to the spear, he hit the back of the spear, propelling it faster and faster. Everyone watched as the spear quickly flew into the sky in amazement. Suddenly, he hit the moon, shocking everyone, and causing it to shatter. I do not think so. Lucy exclaimed in shock. The moon, is breaking up. They did it. The villagers exclaimed in shock. Suddenly, the purple shattered, revealing the white moon, shocking them. What? Suddenly, the villagers started to glow, shocking Natsu, Lucy, Happy, and Gray. They're glowing, Natsu exclaimed. They're probably reverting back to being human. Lucy said as she see the glow of the people slowly fade. To her surprise, they didn't change, they were still demons. What? But why? As expected, Fox said as he landed on the ground, looking up at the sky as Urza reverted back to her default armor. The island was surrounded by a magical shell needed to perform moon drip. And it has an unusual effect on demons, Urza said, causing the villagers, Natsu, Lucy, Happy and Grey to look surprised. W what are you saying, said the old villager, still in shock. They say you weren't turned into demons, that you were already demons, Ur explained. Which explains why you can't go near the ruins, which was a place full of holy presence. Why you mean, we've always been demons, one of them said as they looked at themselves, their expressions slowly turning into recognition. Yes, we have, said a voice. They all turned to the doors and saw a demon with a bandana trimmed mustache, brown shirt, pants, and purple skin with black spots and a pair of horns. A-A-A-G-H. Ghost. Natsu and Happy exclaimed as they hugged each other. Bobo, the old chief said as he walked towards his son whom he thought he had killed. Son, you are alive. Yeah, Bobo said with a smile. Sorry to mislead you, but when I saw how you guys thought you were human, I didn't think it was safe for me, so I had to leave and get help. But how are you alive? Gray asked, narrowing his eyes. You disappeared, didn't you? Suddenly, Bobo disappeared, surprising most of them. They heard some flapping sounds, causing them to look up and see Bobo with purple wings and a fanged grin. He then turned to the fairy tale mages and bowed his head in thanks. Thanks for helping us, he said as tears of joy leaked from his eyes. My son, exclaimed the old chief as the wings appeared from his back and flew towards his son, hugging him as tight as he could. I'm glad you're alive. All the demons finally freed from the illusion that they were cursed humans, cheered and flew into the air on leathery wings. The wizards watched in awe and fascination as the demons smiled widely. They look so happy, Natsu said with a smile. Yes, happy agreed. They are demons, but they smile like angels, Lucy said with a smile. Hem, how strangely poetic, Fox commented. Let's celebrate, the demons cheered. Later.
In less than an hour, a party was underway, held by the demons as a sign of thanks to the wizards who helped them. Torches were lit, music was played, flowers were hung like streamers, and delicious food was prepared. Fox was just enjoying his drinks, which were like sake. Urza was sitting next to him, enjoying the cake, and Karama was enjoying the food. Gray, Lucy, Natsu, Er, and Happy were also sitting next to them, resting after what seemed like a long day. Er received a dress made by the villagers, returning the shirt to Gray. Hem, hey, Gray, Lucy said, drawing Gray's attention. You have a head injury. It could heal. Really, Gray said, touching the spot where Leon's attack hit him. Oh well, let it heal. It'll be a reminder of how I got it. Look, he's great, one of the female demons said, looking at Gray with a blush. And handsome, agreed her friend, laughing. Tech, don't act so nice, stripper, Natsu said, eating the fire from the torch. Look, he's eating fire, one of the demons said in shock and amazement. He must be a demon. So tell me about this fairy tale? Er said, holding up a cup of alcohol before it was confiscated by her hand. Here's. You're too young to drink, Fox said as he handed him a cup of juice. Young man, I'm old enough to be your mother. Mentally, yes, but physically, you're underage, Fox said as he downed the alcohol in one gulp. I could spend your bedtime. Why you? Er said, a vein appearing on her head. So, fairy tale is a great place. Gray exclaimed before a fight could escalate between the two. There are a lot of good people, like Master Makarov. Maybe I'll let you join, I mean, if you want. Gray looked down sheepishly, acting like a child he wanted to show off to his parents. Er smiled, seeing that Gray emerged from the depressed child who wanted revenge on an excellent young man. Sure, I have nowhere to go, Er said as she drank the juice. Yule, Gray said, emotion in his eyes. Yeah, that sounds like fun, said Er. As they celebrated, Fox kept thinking about the lacework of magic that surrounded the village. That magic, he knew he had felt it before, and he wondered why she was there. He pondered as he moved the cup of alcohol out of Er's reach. A few kilometers away from the town, a masked figure in a cloak looked out over the town, smiling before disappearing into the night. Oh, about that reward, here, the village elder said as he and Bobo walked towards the wizards, carrying the large amounts of jewels, as well as the golden key. Whoa, 700 million jewels, Natsu exclaimed, remembering the reward money. That's a lot of money. Gray exclaimed, also happy. That's a lot of rent money. Lucy clapped her hands happily. Yes, happy clapped his hands. Sorry, but we'll have to decline, Urza said, surprising all four groups. This quest was unofficial, so we can't accept the reward. But still, you have done so much for us, said the old man. Please accept it as a sign of our gratitude. Hem, well, if you put it that way, we'll accept your reward, Lucy said as she went and grabbed the golden key. The golden key will do, thank you. Natsu, Happy, and Gray were depressed as Lucy cheered that they got the golden key. They then continued to celebrate as the night was young. The next day. Everyone from Fairy Tale, as well as Er, who was wearing new clothes provided by the villagers, walked towards the beach, waving goodbye to the demon villagers. Bobo offered to row them, but Urza said that they already had a way back, so he politely declined the offer. Fox Coon, what kind of ship did you guys use? Lucy asked Fox as they neared the beach. A pirate ship, Fox replied, and sure enough, there was a pirate ship waiting for them. Urza Sama, Fox Sama, Karama Sama, welcome back, exclaimed the pirates, happy to see them well. We are ready to sail. Wow, that's awesome, Gray commented as he looked at the ship. No wonder you guys got here so fast. Well, let's not keep them waiting, Fox said as he, Karama, Urza, Happy, Gray, and Ur boarded the ship. I'm not getting on a pirate ship. Lucy exclaimed before Natsu patted him on the shoulder. You can swim with me, Natsu said with a smile. Re crazy, Lucy exclaimed. Soon enough, they were all on the pirate ship, which began to set sail, heading back to Harjin town, with Natsu leaning over the edge, ready to throw up. On the hills of the island, Leon, Sherry, Toby, and Yuka watched the ship depart. Leon looked at Gray and Er, a mixture of happy and sad on his face. You really shouldn't go with them? Sherry asked tearfully. Aren't they your family? Yes, this is for the best, Leon said as he looked at Gray, Er, and Fox. He then turned to the three who decided to stay with him, a smile on his face. Tell me, how do you feel about joining a guild? Meanwhile, at the Magic Council's Fury Branch building, Sigrian was in his office, looking out the window with a smile on his face. Suddenly, a masked man appeared behind him. 
So how did it go? He asked the man, who took off his mask, and suddenly, the man turned into Ultir. Fox is as awesome as we think, she said with a smile. He managed to defeat Deliora with one attack. Oh? Well, Deliora wasn't that important to our plans, Sigrian said as he walked over to Ultir, grabbing her chin. Tell me, how are those fairy tail? What's wrong with your face? Ultir blinked as her right cheek began to swell like a balloon. He suddenly cried out in pain as he held his cheek, with Sigrian laughing at his situation. Ow, to think that it would suddenly hurt, he said as he remembered the blow that Natsu hit him back in the village. Natsu Dragneel also has potential, but Fox is the one you really have to watch out for. Let's see how they change the game, Sigrian said as he sat down at his desk, smiling. Enter me a bit longer, fairy tale. A few days later, the group finally reached Magnolia after traveling from Harjin town. Urza asked Fox why they couldn't travel through shadows, he replied that he couldn't do it with so many long-distance people. Besides, he enjoyed a nice ride back to the guild. Beside her, Lucy was dizzy, looking at her collection of celestial spirit keys. I can't believe after all that hard work, we only have one small key, Natsu complained, pouting and crossing his arms. Yes, Happy agreed. Oh well, there's nothing we can do about it, Lucy said cheerfully. It's easy for you to say you're the only one who got something out of it, Gray commented. What key is that, anyway? It's the key to Sagittarius, the archer, Lucy explained. Sagittarius, do you mean like this? Gray asked, imagining a man with the head of a horse, carrying a bow and arrow. No, more like that, Lucy said, imagining a creature with the upper body of a man and the lower body of a horse, holding a bow and arrow. Natsu, however, was imagining a strange creature, with a yellow head with rose petals, a strange smiling face, and a leafy green body with tentacles. That's not a man or a horse, Lucy said with a sweat. Well, I hope you're having fun because once we get to the guild, you'll be punished, Urza said. It took them a few seconds to realize what Urza meant. Oh no, we forgot we stole that application. Lucy exclaimed, remembering that little bite. Oh no, what's going to happen to us? Happy cried. The master will decide, Urza said, a smile on her face. Personally, I hope he does, foo foo foo. Right, Fox said, turning to face them. It's been a while since he happened to anyone. No, Happy cried. No, please, just kill me. Gray cried in panic. What is? Lucy cried, scared. Don't worry, Natsu said in a calm tone, smiling. Grandpa loves me. I'll talk to him about all this. I don't think you should talk, Lucy said with a deadpan expression. Oh no, there's no escape, Urza said with a smile directed at Natsu. I can't wait for you. Natsu just smiled before slowly turning pale and sweating profusely. He then tried to run, but Urza grabbed his foot and started dragging him back to the guild. No, anything but IT. He cried as he scratched the ground. What exactly? Ur asked. Karama flew to her and whispered something in her ear. Oh my, I feel sorry for you. What's going to happen to us? Lucy yelled as Gray and Happy followed behind. The group walked further towards Magnolia, right where their guild was located. Fox noticed that people seemed to be giving them strange looks, and he could feel pity for him. Something's wrong, he commented and quickened his pace, surprising them. Fox Coon? Lucy asked as they quickly followed him. When they finally saw the guild, they gasped at what they saw. The guild was a wreck, metal columns protruding from the walls and ceiling, the symbol shattered on the floor, and the name board destroyed. Our guild, Gray exclaimed in shock. What happened? Urza said in silent anger. W who did this? Lucy stuttered in shock. Happy, Ur and Karama just looked at the building in shock as Natsu watched what happened to his guild. As for Fox, he was releasing a red aura as his body trembled with anger. Fox, calm down, Karama said, sensing his partner's wrath. Who did this? He asked silently, his voice distorted. Happy, Ur and Karama just looked at the building in shock as Natsu watched what happened to his guild. As for Fox, he was releasing a red aura as his body trembled with anger. Fox, calm down, Karama said, sensing his partner's wrath. Who did this? He asked silently, his voice distorted. He was Phantom Lord, said a voice right next to them. The group turned to see Mirajane walking toward them with a sad look on her face. They attacked our guild during the night. End Chapter 8 Chapter 9 Mirajane led the group into the destroyed basement of the guild, where the rest of her companions were, with a somber air instead of the usual cheerful atmosphere. Lucy looked at Fox with a worried expression as they walked through the basement. Being around him for so long, she could tell when something was wrong, and right now, she could feel how angry she was. 
Karama shared her thoughts as well, looking at his friend with a concerned look. Natsu was furious, veins on his head and fists clenched, Urza and Gray seemed calm, but also angry, and Ur just followed the group with a blank face. Hey, the troublemakers are back, one of the wizards commented, making some of them look a little cheerful. Hey, who's the kid? Another new member? I guess that's something to be happy about. The group eventually made it to the back of the basement, a makeshift bar with barrels of booze, and sat down at the table, drinking a mug of beer. Ah, it's time for the troublemakers to go home, he said, his face slightly red from the alcohol. Grandpa, what's going on? Natsu exclaimed in an angry tone. Because you do not do anything? You're right, Makarov said sternly. What were you brats thinking, stealing that S-rank quest? You will be punished. That's not what I mean. Natsu exclaimed before Makarov hit him in the head. Bad. Makarov exclaimed. Then he hit Gray. Bad. Hit Happy on the forehead. Bad. He smacked Lucis' butt, making her scream. Bad tilde. Master, Urza said, drawing Makarov's attention. We can't let this attack slide. She's right, Fox said in a mixture of calm and anger. They attacked our guild, we should retaliate, Batbeo. Ha ha ha, it's unusual to see you so nervous, Fox. Makarov laughed. Besides, those phantom lord idiots attacked an empty guild last night. No need to get violent. But old, exclaimed Fox. That's enough Fox. Makarov exclaimed as he slapped something. Don't make me hit you. Then why do you hit me? Lucy exclaimed as she watched the outstretched arm smack into her rear. You won't do anything to phantom lord, is that clear Fox? Makarov said in a stern voice. Very well, master, Fox said before walking over to a nearby empty table. Then he made himself comfortable, taking out his sake bottle and cup, drinking. Fox coon, Lucy said in a worried tone as she looked at her friend. Gray, Urza, Happy, and Mirajane seemed surprised by her outburst, as he was usually calm. But since it was his guild, they could understand. Fox's right, man, Natsu exclaimed, slapping his palms on the bar. We should attack Phantom Lord too. I said no. Makarov exclaimed in a stern tone before jumping off the bar. Now, excuse me, I have to pee. Old man. Natsu exclaimed as he was about to run after him, only to be stopped by Urza. That's enough, Natsu, Urza said, grabbing him by the scarf. It's been a long trip. We should rest. By the way, Mira-san, Gray gestured towards Ur. This is my teacher and she wanted to join Fairy Tale. This pretty girl is your teacher? Mirajane said as she looked at Ur before Gray with a strange look. I didn't know you were that kind of person, Gray. What? Gray said with a confused expression why Mirajane looked like she was a freak. Ur just sighed and she took a step forward. I'm Ur Milkovich, she introduced herself to her. I taught Gray Ice make magic. What? Mirajane said in a surprised tone. But Gray said you were a bossy old hag. Gray paled as Ur had a calm smile on her face, a murderous aura radiating from her, all directed at Gray. I see, she said in a calm tone as she placed a hand on Gray's lower back. Well, when we last saw each other, I was 30 years old and he was just a little boy. So I can see why he would think I'm an old hag, right Gray? Gray suddenly cried out in pain as Ur pinched his back with as much force as he could muster. I am sorry. Gray cried as he lay on the ground, fighting the pain. So where do I sign up? Ur said with a smile as she let go of Gray. As Mirajane helped Ur sign up, the group stood with Fox, silent and sullen at what happened to his guild. Fox thought it was his fault. The reason why he kept doing low-level quests was so he could come to the guild quickly, so could protect it. Are you alright fox Coon? Lucy asked, causing Fox to turn in her direction. I'm fine, Lucy-san, Fox said as he took a sip from his cup. Lucy frowned, noting the tone of his voice and the slight ripple of his drink. Lucy didn't think anything could make Fox so nervous. It's okay, he said, not knowing what to say. Mirane, we're back, Lisanna called as she and Flair walked to the bar, carrying groceries. Flair was using her hair to carry most of it. Oh Natsu, happy you're back. Lisanne, happy exclaimed as he flew towards her and landed on her head. Do you have fish? Yeah, I bought a lot, Lisanna said with a smile as Happy cheered. Once the groceries were behind the counter, Flair walked over to the table and sat down next to Fox. How was the mission, Fox San? She asked as she watched Fox as he refilled her cup. Everything went well, said Fox. Catching these troublemakers and finishing the mission was easier than doing it, thanks to Urza San. Fox San, you did most of the work, Urza said before Fox cut her off. So how are you, Flair San? She asked, looking at Flair. You didn't get hurt, did you? 
No, she answered, shaking her head. No one was hurt. But why did Phantom Lord attack us? Fairy Tail and Phantom Lord are rival guilds, Kurama answered as she looked at Flair. Ever since the two guilds existed, they have been competing in terms of popularity. Hey, we're so much better than them, Natsu complained. But Gramps is being a chicken. Suddenly, Fox hit him on the head, sending his face to the table. Don't talk about the old man like that, she said sternly. It pains me to admit it, but the old man is right. If we retaliate, he could cause a guild war, and a war between Fairy Tail and Phantom Lord could cause serious damage. Is Phantom Lord really that strong? Lucy asked with wide eyes. Well, old man Makarov is a formidable wizard, being one of the ten holy wizards, Gray said. But Phantom Lord's guild master Jose Paula is also one of the ten wizard saints. Not only that, but his S-class mages are the same as ours, Urza said as he crossed his arms. The Element 4 and Black Steel, Gajil, his Iron Dragon Slayer. A Dragon Slayer? Lucy said in shock as she looked at a grumpy Natsu. Like Natsu? I'm so much better than that Gajil. Natsu exclaimed in anger. From the Iron Bars, it looks like Gajil was the one who attacked us, Urza said before getting a thoughtful look on his face. But still, why did they attack us? Our guilds may not get along, but we never escalated to this. For now, we just have to be careful, Fox said. Everyone should be in groups, in case something else happens. Good idea, Fox, Makarov said with a nod, coming back from the bathroom. I will inform the others. As Makarov did this, Fox kept thinking about the sudden attack. He heard that Black Steel was always fighting and asking for trouble, like a bad version of Natsu. But Jose Porla is not like that. Why would he risk a guild war with Fairy Tail? Whatever the reason, destroying the guild might not be his only provocation, Fox thought as he sipped sake from him. I won't let them attack Fairy Tail again. Later. Lucy and Plu walked back to their apartment, balancing easily on the bridge. The men driving the boats greeted her, already used to seeing her walk like this. I still can't believe our guild has been destroyed, she said with a frown. Geez. To think that I ever thought about joining Phantom Lord. They have strong mages, but their reputation is horrible. I'm so glad I decided to join Fairy Tail. If I hadn't, I wouldn't have met Fox Coon. A shade of pink shook her cheeks as she arrived at her apartment. She shook her head at her. Thinking of Fox, she began to worry. Ever since they saw her guild status of her, she has been acting strange. Usually, he was observant, but now he was distracted. She even had to remind him about his weight of him. He, maybe he'll go back to normal once he fixes the guild, Lucy said as she put the key in the door. It's good to be home. Welcome home. Kya, she exclaimed as she saw Urza, happy, gray, Kurama, Ur, and a grumpy Natsu sitting around her living room table, drinking tea and eating snacks. What a nice place you have Lucy, Urza commented with a smile. What are you doing here, she exclaimed though she kicked Natsu and happy. Master Makarov said that it would be safer for him if we stayed in groups, Urza explained calmly. So, we decided to spend the night at your house. It would have been nice if you had told me first, Lucy said with a frown. She then looked around the room. Um, where's Fox Coon? Do you miss your boyfriend? Ur asked with a smile, making Lucy look flustered. He said he has something to do, Kurama said with a sigh. He is still in shock from what happened. We all are, Gray said with a frown. We all want to do something. But the grandparents are too scared, Natsu said sullenly. No, it's not, Urza said. It's like Fox said, a guild war is too dangerous. Now, just relax. Tomorrow will be better. A few seconds later, the group was rummaging through Lucis' things without asking permission. Hey, do you have anything to eat? Urza, look at Lucis' underwear. Wow, how cheeky of you, Lucy. Ah, to be young again. You guys got home too quickly, Lucy commented in a deadpan tone. She then noticed that Gray was reading his novels written about him. Hey, don't read that. But I want to see what happens next, Gray complained as Lucy put the papers in a drawer and locked it. Did you get to the part where they fought that giant guardian gorilla? Kurama asked. That was my favorite. Have you read it? Lucy exclaimed, her cheeks red. Yeah, we thought he was pretty good, Kurama said with a nod. Us. Fox likes it too, Kurama explained, causing Lucy's face to turn red. I never saw him read anything other than tales of a gutsy ninja. God, why are you going through my stuff? Lucy complained, I need a bath to relax. Yeah, a nice hot bath would be relaxing, Urza said with a smile as she stood up. Can I join you, Lucy? I could wash your back. Sure, Lucy said, seeing no reason to refuse. 
A bath would be nice, Ur said with a smile. You better take a bath too, Urza said, turning to Natsu and Gray. No way, Natsu complained. It seems like a hassle, Gray said. Oh? Then how about we take a bath together, like old times? Urza suggested as she placed her arms around Natsu and Gray's shoulders. What kind of relationship do you guys have? Lucy exclaimed, an unhealthy shade of red. Meanwhile, in the dark streets, Team Shadow Gear was walking the streets to retire for the night. I feel safe having two strong men with me, Levy said with a smile. Don't worry, Levy Chan, Jet said as he puffed out his chest. I'll protect you. No, I will protect you. Droy exclaimed. The two boys began butting heads, causing Levy to laugh. Little did they know that they were being watched by a figure standing on the rooftops, a predatory grin on his face as he gazed at them with red, slanted eyes. He suddenly jumped towards them, ready to grab Levy, who suddenly looked up. Suddenly, a figure appeared in front of her, catching the hand that was trying to grab her. Fox San? Levy exclaimed in shock as Jet and Droy looked shocked. Levy San, Jet San, Planthead San, Fox said in a serious tone. Go and hide. The three of them stood there, not knowing what was going on. Leave away. Fox exclaimed, his voice distorted from him. Surprised by the change in his voice, the three began to run, leaving Fox to look at a tall, muscular man with long spiky black hair, no eyebrows, his face covered in piercings, three studs on each eyebrow, two on the sides of the nose and two below the mouth, as well as five on each ear. On his arms were four studs, sharp canine teeth, and a phantom lord symbol on his right shoulder. He was dressed in a dingy black sleeveless tunic with studded edges, a studded belt, loose beige pants tucked into a studded black boot, and a pair of studded black gloves with wing-like decorations on the cuffs. Shoulders. Black steel gajil, Fox growled as he looked at the grinning dragon slayer. So, another weak fairy? Gajil said with a smile as he looked at Fox. Never heard of you though. You don't need to know my name, Fox said as he tightened his grip on Gajil's hand, making Gajil look slightly surprised before he smiled. I just know you will pay. I'd like to see you try it. Gajil exclaimed as he threw a punch, which Fox dodged by jerking his head to the side. Gajil then launched a kick but Fox dodged it. A magic circle appeared in the hand held by Fox. Iron Dragon Pole. His arm suddenly turned into a metal pole, the same one that destroyed the guild, and reached out, pushing Fox a few feet. He dug his heels into the ground until the pole stopped, surprising Gajil. Fox then lifted Gajil up into the air, using the pole for leverage. Fox then threw Gajil to the ground, making a small crater. Fox stood there looking at where Gajil was until a magic circle appeared from Gajil's arm and turned into a blade, shooting knives at Fox. Shadow Grace, Black Vortex. Fox exclaimed as he raised his left hand, and a circular shadow emerged from his palm. The knives were absorbed by the shadow, surprising Gajil. Release. The knives were thrown at Gajil, who used his arms to block them. He slid a few meters before the knives finally stopped. He looked at Fox and saw that he was gone. He tried to search for it, using his enhanced senses, but to no avail. Suddenly, he felt a heavy blow to his jaw as Fox appeared from under him, hitting him in the jaw. He felt himself being lifted before Fox grabbed his leg and slammed him against the wall, using his left arm to push Gajil by the neck, pinning him down. Now, what does Jose Porla want? Fox demanded, pushing on his forearm, choking Gajil a bit. He's not stupid enough to start a guild war, at least not without something to fight for. Why should I know? Gajil said with a smirk before Fox pushed his forearm against Gajil's neck. Because you're probably his loyal lapdog, Fox said, causing Gajil to frown. When the teacher says bark, you ask, how loud, am I right? Gajil just looked at Fox before seeing something and smiled. Fox noticed and heard quick footsteps approaching them. Fox quickly turned around and threw out a left fist, but was surprised when the figure dodged and hit his arm in several places, where the chakra points were located. What, he thought surprised when his arm went slack. My chakra points were blocked? You're within my range, a familiar voice said, causing Fox's eyes to widen. Two strikes. Fox felt two consecutive blows to his chest and shoulder. Four hits, two more blows to his abdomen and right arm. Eight strikes, four blows below his neck and several points on his chest. Sixteen strikes. Thirty-two strikes. Sixty-four strikes. One hundred twenty-eight strikes. Fox could feel the pain running through his body before he started to feel numb. He fell to the ground, unable to speak or move. The only thing he could move was his right fingers. 
he could have handled it, Gajil growled, rubbing his neck as he walked toward the figure. Clearly, the figure said as he stepped out of the shadow. Long brown hair with the end tied, white eyes without pupils, dressed in black robes with loose white pants and black sandals, a bag tied around his waist. On his head was a headband with the Konaha symbol engraved on the metal plate. Bite me, bug eyes, Gajil growled before looking at the paralyzed fox and kicking him in the head, knocking him out. Not so hard, right? There was no information on this one, Gajil's partner said before noticing the scroll on his back. Wait this scroll. What about that? Gajil said as the person removed the scroll tied to Fox's back. This is the ceiling scroll, the boy said in shock before looking at Fox. How? Neji Kun. Gajil San, a female voice called, landing near them. A brown-haired girl with her hair tied up in two buns, resembling a panda's ears, wearing a black flak jacket over a white long-sleeved shirt, maroon pants, black fingerless gloves, and black sandals, with pockets attached to the waist. On his head was a Konoha headband. I managed to hold off the three wizards. Now what? We make them mad, Gajil said as he looked at Fox, smiling. I was going to use those three pieces of trash, but this one will do. When Gajil picked Fox up from the back of her cloak and walked towards the park, the girl was staring at what Neji was holding, her eyes wide. Neji Kun, she said, moving closer to get a better look. Is that the ceiling scroll? Yes, Tenten San, Neji replied, looking at his teammate. But I thought Orochimaru had it, Tenten said as Neji strapped the scroll to her back. Perhaps that person is Orochimaru's subordinate, Neji said as veins appeared around his eyes as he looked at Fox, noticing his unnatural chakra coils. His chakra feels unnatural. Do you think we can find our way home with that? Tenten asked, a hopeful gleam in his eyes. Perhaps, Neji said before seeing Gajil put Fox on the biggest tree, using metal rings to put him on top of his head. He tried to remove Fox's shirt, to mark the phantom tail symbol on her chest, but her clothes were stuck. Even breaking them doesn't work. So he just marked the tree to show them who attacked him. Gihihi, Gajil laughed as he looked at her handiwork. This looks good enough to piss off those fairies. With that, Neji, Tenten, and Gajil left, leaving Fox dangling from the tree, unconscious and motionless. The next morning, Lucy, Natsu, Gray, Urza, Happy, Ur, and Kurama were walking the streets early in the morning. Kurama, who was being carried by Lucy, was unusually quiet, a worried expression on her face. He knew Fox, so it was worrying that he hadn't heard from him last night. Usually, he would be back before midnight. Hey, I'm sure Fox Kun is fine, Lucy said, noticing Kurama's worried expression. He's probably busy last night. Prabham? Kurama said before noticing something on the sidewalk. What's that? The group looked up and their eyes widened as they saw Levi, Jet, and Droy on the ground, out cold. Levi Chan. Lucy exclaimed as she ran towards Team Shadow Gear, with the rest of her following her. She knelt down and lifted Levi's head. Are you okay? Lu Chan? Levi said weakly as he widened his eyes. Where, where are we? What happened? Urza asked seriously as Natsu and Gray helped Jet and Droy up. We were, walking home, Levi said as she tried to remember what happened. So, Fox San stopped someone from attacking us. Oh no, Fox San. Where did you last see him? Kurama asked seriously. Near the park, Levi said as she and her classmates got up quickly. The group then headed to the park as fast as they could, worried expressions on their faces. When they got there, many people gathered at the largest tree in the center of the park, looking surprised. Move, Urza ordered, walking through the crowd were from fairy tale. When they reached the base of the tree, their eyes widened as they saw Fox hanging off the side of the tree with metal rings on his wrists, unconscious, with the Phantom Lord logo above his head. Fox Kun. Lucy exclaimed in shock and horror. Kurama flew from her arms and went to remove his rings before gently lowering him to the ground. Lucy was at her side, she seemed to be close to tears as she straddled him. Ghost Mr. Natsu growled angrily, his palms bleeding from clenching his fists together as he stared at the badge. They did this. Soon, the fairy tale wizards arrived and saw their comrade's state, all shocked and angry when they saw Fox's state. Makarov dressed in his white fur trimmed coat with gold shoulder pads and chest medals, the insignia of the ten holy magi on his back and his staff in hand, walked through the crowd, his expression hidden as he gazed at Fox. No, Mirajane said, tears brimming in her eyes as Lisanna hugged her for support, tears brimming in her eyes as well. Master. Urza said, her expression more than angry at him, her arms trembling with anger. 
She wasn't the only one angry Natsu, Grey, Elfman, and Kena all had angry expressions when they saw Fox. Makarov looked at Fox before taking a deep breath and covering his face with his hand. I can laugh at them for destroying our building, Makarov said as his hand shook. But I'm not going to stand by and let one of my children get hurt. In anger, he snapped the staff he was holding, causing it to snap in half. When he looked up, his eyes were veined killer as a golden glow engulfed his body. This means war, he declared in anger. Oaktown. In the Phantom Lord Guild, many of the mages were loud and obnoxious, drinking, fighting, and touching each other inappropriately. They were busy celebrating and ridiculing fairy tale after hearing what Gajil did to one of her mages. Well, it's time I saw this wide, said a bald wizard with dental problems as he started out through the large doors. Ha, is this a date or something? His guildmates asked, laughing. No, the bitch is too ugly for me, the wizard said with a smirk. Even though she's rich. When I threatened her, she begged me to pay me to double. She's near that fairy trash's house. Maybe I'll rip off some fairy wings while I'm there. They laughed when he reached the door. But when he was about to open the door, he exploded. Everyone fell silent as the bald wizard, now blackened with soot, crashed across the guild, knocking his symbol. When the smoke cleared, they saw Natsu with his fist smoking, looking at them. Behind him were the fairy tale mages, who seemed ready to fight. Fairy tale is here, Makarov stated. What the hell? The phantom lord mages exclaimed before Natsu charged fists on fire. Come on phantom lord, he exclaimed as he pummeled the mages, left and right, knocking out some teeth and breaking some bones. I don't care who you are, just come get some. Don't get cocky, one of them exclaimed as he tried to punch Natsu, only to receive a crushing blow from Salamander. Ice make, lances. Gray exclaimed as he made several ice spears that stabbed a few wizards, though he spared vital organs. He then made a giant hammer and slammed it into the ground which knocked some of his feet off of him as he smashed those that were hit. Ice make, impact. Beast arm, black bull. Elfman exclaimed as his right arm turned into a large, muscular black beast arm, which he used to start punching and beating nearby phantom lord mages. What the hell is with his arm? One of them exclaimed as he watched his guildmates punch through the air. Suddenly, a white speck appeared and sliced across his face, making him scream in pain. The white blur stopped, revealing Lisanna, dressed in a two-piece tiger skin bikini, her hair longer, with cat ears, cat-like claws on her arms and feet, a necklace with a bell, and a necklace. Tail. Soul animal, cat, he exclaimed before disappearing in a blur, attacking the enemy mages. Card magic, thunderbolts fate. Kana exclaimed as she tossed three cards into the air, which combined and began to release strong beams of light, electrocuting nearby mages. She then threw cards at a group of wizards. Card magic, explosion cards. The group screamed as they were thrown into the air as Kana kept throwing magic cards at them, glaring at them. Purple net. Macau exclaimed as he shot purple fire that trapped a large group of phantom lord mages. Now, Wakaba. In that, Wakaba exclaimed as he puffed on his pipe. Fists made of smoke erupted from his pipe, hitting the wizards' faces. Smoke magic, smoke crush. Guns magic, sparks shot. Alzac exclaimed as he rapidly fired his firearm, hitting the wizards with electrical bullets, paralyzing them. Suddenly, he saw a wizard about to hit him from behind. Eat this, he exclaimed, before a green bullet hit him, knocking him down. Don't be sloppy, Al. Visca said, holding the sniper from him. Nice shot, Visca. Alzac said before returning to the fight. Target lock activated, homing shot. Visca said as he used his magic to target the enemy mages. Once they were closed, she fired, and one bullet took them all out. The sky wheel armor. Urza exclaimed as he changed armor. She then flew into the air, swords floating behind her. Dance my swords. Her swords began to cut and stab at her enemies, making them scream. Magic ring, twister. Loki exclaimed as he used his rings to fire tornadoes at the enemy, launching them into the air, where Happy, using a club, hit them over the head. High-speed magic, skyward falcon. Jet exclaimed as he ran into a group, lashing them with a hard kick that sent them flying. Magic plant, knuckle plant. Droy exclaimed as he threw seeds on the ground that magically sprouted and hit the group Jet sent flying. Picture magic, nature run wild. Redis exclaimed as he painted boars on his stomach and used his magic to bring them to life, throwing them at the wizards, crushing them. Ice make, Rose Garden. Ur exclaimed as she stood between groups of phantom lord mages trying to attack her, blasting ice roses at her enemies, freezing them on contact. What kind of brat is this? One of them exclaimed before he was covered in ice. Would make, Shy loves prey. 
Maki exclaimed as she used her magic to create giant wooden tools that blew the wizards away. What is that supposed to mean? A mage exclaimed, not seeing the connection between the name and his attack. Look, it's Makarov, exclaimed one of them, seeing the little teacher. Get him. All of Phantom Lord's nearby mages charged at Makarov, thinking he was easy prey due to his size and age. Suddenly, Makarov's eyes shone before he grew larger until he shadowed the mages who tried to attack him. He then easily crushed the mages in front of him with his giant hands, crushing their bones and causing blood to spurt out of their mouths. M. Monster, one of them cried as he looked at Makarov with terrified eyes. You have harmed a child of this monster, Makarov said as he looked at the wizard, making him cry and moan. Do not think you will be protected by human laws. With that, he swept across his arm, knocking several Phantom Lord mages through the guild. Phantom Lord stood there, looking terrified as Fairy Tail easily knocked out her guildmates. This is Fairy Tail, one of them exclaimed in fright. Your master is a monster. And those low-ranking magicians aren't weak. Where are Gajil and Element 4? Urza, in her Flame Empress armor, asked noticing that Phantom Lord's strongest mages were absent. At the top of the hallway, Gajil, Neji, and Tenton stood on the wooden stand, watching the battle. Well, there's Makarov and Titania, Gajil mused with a smile. But I don't see Mistogan, Laxus, or Gildarts. Cocky bastards. But everything is going according to the master's plan. Still, it's impressive how strong Fairy Tail is without them, Neji commented as he looked at the fighters. No wonder he hired us to rescue his daughter. Still, all of this just for her, the girl must be really important, Tenton said, though he secretly admired Urza, with her varied use of weapons. Suddenly, they felt killing intent directed toward them. Surprised, they looked up and saw Karama perched on the rafters, watching them. A cat? Tenton asked, surprised that the feeling came from something small. Those clothes. Neji said, sensing that she had seen those clothes before. What do you want? Gajil said with a smile. You, you were the one who attacked Fox, she growled before noticing the scroll. And you took the scroll from him. You bastards. With a roar, he transformed into his human form and charged when Neji and Tenten looked surprised. Naruto, they thought as Kurama threw a punch that Gajil blocked, causing a shock wave. Gihihi, Gajil laughed, feeling the power of that blow. He then lifted his arm, causing Kurama to be pushed off, landing on another beam. Interesting. So that guy's name is Fox? I guess there's more trash to you than I thought. I'll break you. Kurama growled before charging again. Gajil just smiled as he jumped too. His fists collided, causing another shock wave. Magnolia City. Lucy, Flair, and Levy were at the hospital, watching Fox. Mirajane was with them earlier, but she went back to the guild to contact Laxus, Mistogan, or Gildarts. Lucy had wiped the tears on her cheeks as she looked at her friend and her teacher, not wanting to see him so powerless. Phantom Lord, she said, clenching her fists and frowning. They will pay for this. Levi nodded. Since she got to know Fox better, she began to see him as a good friend and partner. And it was thanks to him that she was not harmed by Phantom Lord. Hey, he's moving, Flair commented when she saw his fingers tremble. Fox Coon? Lucy said, her eyes lighting up with hope. But he hasn't gotten up yet. He's still unconscious. Um, so why is his hand moving like that? Flair asked. Lucy and Levy blinked before looking at his hand. Sure enough, his finger was tapping on the bed. Should we call the nurse? Levy asked, a little worried. Wait, Lucy said, narrowing her eyes. Fox Coon and Kurama tend to do this sometimes, like they're communicating. This is Morse code. Really? Levy asked surprised. Yes, Fox Coon is trying to say something, Lucy said with a smile. Do you know what he is saying? Flair asked, tilting her head. Um, no, Lucy said, looking embarrassed. I'll try, Levy said as he grabbed a pen and paper. I read about Morse code a long time ago, I could crack it. Levy looked at the finger and wrote the taps, whether long or short, fast or slow. After a few minutes, she wrote down what he might be saying. Soft. Fist. Chakra. Points, she said, looking confused, and so did Flair. Lucy, however, lit up. Chakra points, she said before grabbing the glasses Fox gave her in her bag and putting them on. When she activated it, she saw that Fox's path was blocked except for his right hand. His chakra path is blocked. Chakra path? Levy and Flair asked, confused. I'll explain later, Lucy said before concentrating the magic on her fingers. Praying that it would work, she began hitting the chakra points, using her magic to unlock them. Once she got to the last one, which was her chest, Fox gasped and sat up, causing the girls to jump in shock. Thank you, he panted as the girls calmed down. 
I've been trying to find a way to tell you guys. It's good that you two are observant, Flair San, and Lucy San. It's also good that you know Morse code, Levy San. Fox Coon. Lucy exclaimed when she suddenly hugged him, surprising Fox. You're okay. Um, thanks? Fox said awkwardly, still not used to being hugged. Flair joined the hug too, happy to see him back. Fox San. Levy said while looking down. I'm sorry, because of me, you got hurt. Don't apologize, Levy San, Fox said as the girls let him go so he could stand up. He was saving a fellow fairy tale. Besides, it was my fault for being careless. Fox San. Levy said before wiping his eyes. What happened, anyway? Lucy asked as Fox stretched out, to regain feeling in his body. Black Steel had some company, Fox said, though there was an air of confusion around him. But they used chakra, like Karama and me. But how can that be? Lucy said, surprised. Unless they're from the elemental nations. That can't be possible, Fox said, shaking his head. But the guy who attacked me looks familiar. Where is the old man? Master Makarov took them to Phantom Lord, Levy replied. This isn't good, Fox said as he quickly headed for the door. Come on, we have to hurry up. Oaktown. Phantom Lord was slowly recovering from the surprise attack as they began their counterattack, managing to defeat some fairy tale mages. Despite getting their bearings on what was going on, they were still being overpowered. The fight got even more out of control as the fight between Karama and Gajil went from the wooden beams up and down, leaving many mages between their fight. Karama has a snarl on his face while Gajil has a wide smile on his face, laughing as they fight, tearing the place apart. Iron Dragon Pole. Gajil's arm turned into a pole aimed at Karama, who jumped to avoid it. Shadow Clone Jutsu, he exclaimed, making a sign with his crossed finger. In puffs of smoke, two more Karamas appeared next to the original, which he grabbed and threw at Gajil. Gajil used his other arm to block the two Karamas' attacks before launching his arm, which turned into a metal pole, hitting the two, and making them jump. Suddenly the smoke cleared as Karama impaled him on Gajil's metal arm. He then kicked Gajil in the face, sending him into the bar. That little brat just took Gajil down. One of the Phantom Lord mages exclaimed in shock. Suddenly, Karama ducked as a metal pole tried to hit him, causing the people behind him to get hit. Funny, Gajil said with a smile as he returned his arm to normal. You would even hurt your own guildmates, Karama said in shock as he looked at Gajil. These weaklings getting hurt isn't my problem, Gajil said with a smile. Gajil, a voice exclaimed. He looked over and saw Natsu running towards him, his fists burning. Natsu then punched Gajil in the face, sending him into the air. I am Natsu Dragneel, the fire dragon slayer. Another dragon slayer? A phantom lord mage exclaimed. Like Gajil? This is my fight, Natsu. Karama exclaimed in anger. Do not interfere. This is my first fight. Natsu exclaimed angrily, bumping into Karama. Do you want me to gag you again? Karama asked before he felt someone running towards him. He quickly jumped, dodging a palm strike aimed at his chest. He looked over and saw Neji in a gentle fist stance. Who are you? That's my question for you, Neji said, the veins bulging around his eyes. Do you know someone named Naruto Uzumaki? Karama's eyes widened before he looked serious, turning all of his attention back to Neji. Natsu, go get Gajil, Karama said with a growl. I'll take care of this boy. Fine, Natsu said with a savage grin before attacking Gajil. Meanwhile, Makarov walked through the crowd of Phantom Lord Mages, easily making a crowd as he made his way up the stairs. Urza, take charge, Makarov ordered as he went up the stairs. I need to talk to Jose. Teacher, Urza called out before she had to move to avoid a Phantom Lord Mage before attacking him. Meanwhile, Karama was dodging Neji's fast and heavy attacks as he launched his own attacks, but Neji was blocking them. You fight like a shinobi, Neji commented as he doubled back to dodge a kick. He then grabbed the leg and was about to hit the stitches, before Karama unleashed the transformation, breaking free of Neji's grasp. Who taught you? Fox San. Levy said while looking down. I'm sorry, because of me, you got hurt. Don't apologize, Levy San, Fox said as the girls let him go so he could stand up. He was saving a fellow fairy tale. Besides, it was my fault for being careless. Fox San. Levy said before wiping his eyes. What happened, anyway? Lucy asked as Fox stretched out, to regain feeling in his body. Black Steel had some company, Fox said, though there was an air of confusion around him. But they used chakra, like Karama and me. But how can that be? Lucy said, surprised. Unless they're from the elemental nations. That can't be possible, Fox said, shaking his head. But the guy who attacked me looks familiar. 
Where is the old man? Master Makarov took them to Phantom Lord, Levy replied. This isn't good, Fox said as he quickly headed for the door. Come on, we have to hurry up. Oaktown. Phantom Lord was slowly recovering from the surprise attack as they began their counterattack, managing to defeat some fairy tail mages. Despite getting their bearings on what was going on, they were still being overpowered. The fight got even more out of control as the fight between Karama and Gajil went from the wooden beams up and down, leaving many mages between their fight. Karama has a snarl on his face while Gajil has a wide smile on his face, laughing as they fight, tearing the place apart. Iron Dragon Pole. Gajil's arm turned into a pole aimed at Karama, who jumped to avoid it. Shadow Clone Jutsu, he exclaimed, making a sign with his crossed finger. In puffs of smoke, two more Karamas appeared next to the original, which he grabbed and threw at Gajil. Gajil used his other arm to block the two Karamas' attacks before launching his arm, which turned into a metal pole, hitting the two, and making them jump. Suddenly the smoke cleared as Karama impaled him on Gajil's metal arm. He then kicked Gajil in the face, sending him into the bar. That little brat just took Gajil down. One of the Phantom Lord mages exclaimed in shock. Suddenly, Karama ducked as a metal pole tried to hit him, causing the people behind him to get hit. Funny, Gajil said with a smile as he returned his arm to normal. You would even hurt your own guildmates, Karama said in shock as he looked at Gajil. These weaklings getting hurt isn't my problem, Gajil said with a smile. Gajil, a voice exclaimed. He looked over and saw Natsu running towards him, his fists burning. Natsu then punched Gajil in the face, sending him into the air. I am Natsu Dragneel, the Fire Dragon Slayer. Another Dragon Slayer? A Phantom Lord Mage exclaimed. Like Gajil? This is my fight, Natsu. Karama exclaimed in anger. Do not interfere. This is my first fight. Natsu exclaimed angrily, bumping into Karama. Do you want me to gag you again? Karama asked before he felt someone running towards him. He quickly jumped, dodging a palm strike aimed at his chest. He looked over and saw Neji in a gentle fist stance. Who are you? That's my question for you, Neji said, the veins bulging around his eyes. Do you know someone named Naruto Uzumaki? Karama's eyes widened before he looked serious, turning all of his attention back to Neji. Natsu, go get Gajil, Karama said with a growl. I'll take care of this boy. Fine, Natsu said with a savage grin before attacking Gajil. Meanwhile, Makarov walked through the crowd of Phantom Lord Mages, easily making a crowd as he made his way up the stairs. Urza, take charge, Makarov ordered as he went up the stairs. I need to talk to Jose. Teacher, Urza called out before she had to move to avoid a phantom lord mage before attacking him. Meanwhile, Karama was dodging Neji's fast and heavy attacks as he launched his own attacks, but Neji was blocking them. You fight like a shinobi, Neji commented as he doubled back to dodge a kick. He then grabbed the leg and was about to hit the stitches, before Karama unleashed the transformation, breaking free of Neji's grasp. Who taught you? Right, just ask and I just blab, Karama said as he returned to his human form. Give me back the scroll you stole from him. This scroll is the property of Konoha, Neji said with a glare. It was taken over by a traitor, a traitor who killed someone I consider a friend. What are you implying? Karama growled. Your friend works with a traitor, Neji said coldly. I've known Fox since I was born, he doesn't work for any traitors, Karama growled as he made three shadow clones. Besides, that's rich coming from a phantom lord mage, when you're nothing but brutes and criminals. He nodded to two of the clones before they attacked Neji, who blocked and dodged his attacks. The third clone just nodded at Karama, who held out his hand. The clone began moving air over his palm as Karama collected chakra, creating a blue, spinning ball of chakra. Neji saw what Karama was doing, causing his eyes to widen. He heard about that move, the move created by the legendary Yandaimi Hokage, a move that Naruto mastered under the tutelage of Jiraiya the Toad Sage. Impossible, he said before quickly dispatching the two clones and running to Kurama who finished the technique. You are within my range. No, you're in mine. Kurama exclaimed as he dodged Neji's two consecutive blows and aimed the attack at Neji's chest. Rasengan. Neji watched with wide eyes as the Rasengan headed for his chest. Just as he was about to make contact, a bow staff hit Karama in the face, knocking him away from Neji, the Rasengan scattering. Tenton twirled her staff as Neji caught his breath. Be more careful, Neji Kun, Tenton said as they watched Karama stand, watching them as he wiped the blood from his chin. This cat may look like Naruto, but he is stronger than he looks. 
I'm starting to see that, Neji said seriously. No more holding back. Kurama watched as Neji and Tenten looked serious, his chakra rising. He growled as he did the same before attacking the two, who were now ready for him. Meanwhile, Urza was watching Kurama fight, impressed by his skill and intrigued by the people he was fighting. Who are they? He thought. I had never heard of them before. Magnolia City. Fox, Lucy, Levy, and Flair walked through the empty streets, on their way to Oak Town to help others. I hope no one gets hurt, Levy said worriedly as they headed to the station. Suddenly, he felt something wet hit his nose. Hey. Suddenly the sky changed from light blue to dark gray, with rain pouring down on them. Pretty soon, they were soaking wet. Whoa, where did this rain come from? Lucy exclaimed as they looked at a place to cover. Someone's coming, she said warningly as she looked down the street, causing all three girls to tense up. Walking in the rain, holding a blue umbrella, she was a beautiful, pale, curvaceous girl with tightly curled blue hair at the base with midnight. Blue eyes, with a blue coat, a navy blue shawl with furry trim, cream, with a taruturu bozu, and a Cossack hat. Drip, drop, drip, drop, the Russian-accented person said as she walked through the streets. Lucy looked at her carefully, looking worried. Wherever Juvia goes, the rain goes. It drips, 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 drips. Oh, excuse Juvia for interrupting. Juvia was looking for someone. Excuse me. Hey. Lucy said as they watched the girl walk away from them. That was weird. No no no. A French-accented male voice said as the ground next to Juvia began to move. Bonjour with three no. What's that? Flair asked as the floor parted, revealing a thin man with a small pointed mustache, spiked up green hair, and who wore a monocle over his right eye attached to a thin chain, wearing a brown formal suit with a ragged collar over a white shirt. Red tie and simple shoes, as well as a cape tied at the elbows. A weirdo came out of the ground. Lucy exclaimed in shock. How rude, the man exclaimed, looking at Lucy. Oh, Mr. Sun, the woman greeted. Juvia Sama, you must not forget our mission, Saul said as he pointed at Juvia. This rude miss is our target. She is she, Juvia said, surprised when everyone tensed up, looking at the two people. What do you want with Lu Chan? Levy asked as he held his magic pen up at the list. Our client hired us to retrieve Lucy Sama. No, 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 Saul said. After all, a father should care about his daughter, shouldn't he? Dad? Lucy said in shock as she stumbled back a bit. No, that can't be. I see, said Fox, finally realizing what Jose wants. So, Jose Porlo wants Lucy for money. Money, Flair said in a confused tone. Lucy's last name is Hartfelia, the richest family in Fury, Fox answered, surprising the three girls. Jose Porlo wants to use Lucy as a way to earn money. Indeed, sir, Saul said with a smile, leaning to the side. Now, if you'll excuse us, we must capture her. Saul then began to move towards the surprised Lucy, moving across the ground like a fish in water. Flair and Levy tried to use her magic to stop Saul, but he was already in front of Lucy when they were ready to attack. Just as Saul was about to capture her, her face was met by the sole of a sandal, preventing her from reaching Lucy and kicking him off the ground, and she flew past Juvia, who stood there before she turned her head when Saul finally hit the building, knocking it and some teeth out. Water, Juvia said as she was about to prepare a spell, her arm turned to water. Shadow Grace, Shadow Bind. Fox's shadow moved towards Juvia like slithering snakes and he wrapped around Juvia's body, containing her, much to her surprise. Levy and Flair stared at Fox in shock and amazement as he walked over to the bound girl who was struggling to free herself from the shadows, but nothing was working. Juvia can't break free, he thought to himself in shock. How is this possible? She then looked over and saw Fox standing in front of her. She felt intimidated as she looked at her face hidden from her. Tell Jose Porla that Phantom Lord will fall, and he will meet the end of him, Fox said in a dark voice. Why yes, Juvia will do that, she stammered before the shadows finally released her. She suddenly turned into water and headed towards the unconscious sun before they disappeared into the puddles. Once she left, the rain suddenly stopped, the sky quickly turning light blue. That was amazing, Fox San. Levy exclaimed in amazement. Lu Chan was right, you are strong. Lucy San? Flair said in a worried tone as Lucy was kneeling on the ground, worrying Levy and Flair. What's happening? It's my fault, Lucy said as tears welled up in her eyes. Dad, he sent Phantom Lord after me. I am the reason why our guild was destroyed, why Fox Coon was injured. She then felt a hand on her shoulder. She looked up and saw that it was Fox. 
This isn't your fault, Lucy, Fox said, surprising Lucy that he wasn't adding San to her name. Phantom Lord attacking us isn't your fault, it's theirs. I don't blame you for what happened to me. You're my friend, so don't blame yourself, Batbeo. Lucy sniffed before wiping the tears from her eyes and nodded, though she was still upset. Levy San, Flare San, take her back to the guild, Fox said as she started walking. I'll go to Oak Town on my own. Okay, Levy said as Flair nodded before picking up a distraught Lucy and walking back to the guild before Fox started running as fast as he could, towards Oak Town. Oak Town. In Jose Paula's office, Makarov flung open the door and stormed in, his magical aura burning wild and angry. She then saw Jose Porla, a slim, skinny man with a trimmed beard and brown hair tied in a ponytail, cruel black eyes, and red lipstick, dressed in a blue uniform with a black cape, and bat wings on the back. From his shoulders, black boots, and black gloves with the Phantom Lord Guild on the back of his cape. There was a smirk on his face as he looked at Makarov. Well, I was wondering when you'll get here, you old fool, Jose Porla said as Makarov glared at him. Porla, fool, why did you attack my children? Makarov demanded while Jose just chuckled. As if you didn't know, Dreyar, he said. After all, being almost tied down, the only advantage you have is having her in your pockets. Her? Pockets? Makarov said, confused. I'm talking about the girl, Jose said as he kicked his desk, and Makarov's eyes widened as he saw Lucy, bound and gagged. Lucy. Makarov exclaimed as he ran towards them to save her. But then, they passed through his fingers, surprising him. He then looked at Jose, who just smiled and disappeared as a large shadow appeared over Makarov. How tragic it is, said a sad voice before a large magic circle appeared. Suddenly, there was an explosion, causing the fight to stop. Everyone was shocked when they saw someone fall, and it was Makarov. Master Makarov. Old man. Grams. Karama saw him fall and quickly reverted to his cat form and flew towards Makarov, catching him by the back of his coat and flying towards Urza, who had a worried look on his face as Karama handed Makarov over to him. Dot. His skin was green, his breathing was ragged, and he was sweating profusely. Master. Urza said in a worried tone before realizing that his comrade's morale had dropped seeing his master like that. Everyone, stand down. What? We shouldn't go. We have to avenge the old man. We have to go. The old man needs help. Soon, Fairy Tail began to retreat, giving Phantom Lord a morale boost. Gajil jumped back to his perch on top, followed by Neji and Tenton, who saw Fairy Tail run. Suddenly, a puddle crawled towards them, and Juvia appeared. Juvia, where is the girl? Gajil asked as Juvia shook her head. Juvia's sorry, but the target was protected by a man who could control shadows, he explained, making all three of them look surprised. Impossible, she shouldn't be able to recover so quickly, Neji said with a frown. Gihihi, how interesting, Gajil said with a smile as he watched Fairy Tail walk away, though he did notice Karama looking at them before following the others. As Fairy Tail ran out of the city, Urza saw someone running towards them. She saw that it was Fox, who stopped in front of them. Fox. Karama exclaimed, happy to see his friend back on his feet. Old man. Fox exclaimed as he felt that the old man's magic had been dangerously exhausted. Urza San, what happened? We'll explain it to you later. Urza exclaimed as she looked at Makarov worriedly. We need to get Master back. Quote dot dot dot. Everyone, hold on tight. Fox exclaimed before extending his shadow towards the group and they all disappeared into the shadow just as Phantom Lord's mages arrived to attack, only to look around in confusion. Go and run fairy tale, Jose said as he appeared in front of his mages. But you can't escape. End chapter. Chapter 10. In the basement of fairy tale's ruined guild hall, many of the mages were depressed by the wet spirits. Since they returned from Oak Town, Makarov was quickly sent to Porlayuzika's place. Fox attempted to heal him, but it was beyond his healing abilities, as he could feel Makarov's magic being forcefully drawn from him, and the only way he could heal himself as if all the drawn magic could be gathered, and only one wizard could help him. Fortunately, Fox managed to contact Mistogan and explained the situation to him. He said he'll take care of it, but he had to do something first. Fox was standing near the bar, sensing everyone's anxiety. Mira Jane just contacted Laxus, and she refused to help, saying that he has better things to do. Out of anger, Mira Jane broke the Lacrima orb with her bare hands. Everyone, including Urza, felt desperate as their strongest limbs were out of their reach. They didn't know when Mistogan would come, Laxus refused to help and Gildarts was still out of his reach. Not to mention what happened to Makarov. 
Okay, enough, Fox said, getting everyone's attention. Look at all of you. If the old man saw us right now, he would be disappointed. They all seem to look even lower when he says that. He wouldn't want us to whine like babies, he would want us to keep fighting and show them why they shouldn't mess with fairy tale, Batbeo. Fox exclaimed loudly. They all looked at Fox with wide eyes and full of surprise, not thinking that he could talk like that. Feeling motivated, the wizards began to move, anxiety replaced with determination. Hey, who needs first aid? He collects all the lacrima bombs you can collect. I'm going to take the first look. Nodding, Fox started walking, only to bump into Urza. I have to say you can give a surprisingly inspiring speech, he said with a smile as he looked at Fox with a touch of respect. Don't get used to it, Fox said, returning to his monotonous voice. How is Lucy San? Karama San, Flair San, and Levy San are with her, Urza said with a sigh as he turned to look at the blonde, who still seemed depressed after finding out that her father hired Phantom Lord to help her. We'll take her back, war. She's still upset since she found out about her father, blaming herself. She shouldn't blame herself, Fox said. No one would have predicted that Phantom Lord would do this. Go talk to her, Urza said, patting Fox on the shoulder. After all, you are her teacher. A teacher should comfort her student. Fox nodded and walked over to Lucy. Karama was hovering over her head, trying to comfort her, though her way of comforting seems to be less helpful. Flair and Levy also tried to help, but no matter what they do, Lucy wouldn't stop looking upset. Come on, stop being sad, blonde, she said, wagging her tail in front of her face, though she was ignoring him. What happened to that feisty personality? Come on, stand up already. Suddenly, Karama felt her pull it out of Lucy's head before placing it on top of Fox's head. As much as I respect the way you cheer her up, she really isn't helping, she told Karama, who shrugged. Well, sorry, I can't do soft stuff, she said before flying off, living in Fox alone with Lucy, Flair, and Levy. Fox then sat down next to Lucy, who didn't even react as she noticed. Flair and Levy decided to leave, leaving the two of them alone. Lucy San, you know we don't blame you, right? Fox said in a comforting tone. You have nothing to do with this war. It was not your fault. But it's my fault, Lucy said sadly as she looked at Fox, his eyes wet and her ears missing. I ran away from home to join Fairy Tail, and now my father hired Phantom Lord to take me back. And because of that, you got hurt. No, it's not, Fox said. No one, not even your dad, could have guessed that the Phantom Lord started a war with us. And that he hurt me is my fault. I was careless. If I leave Fairy Tail, maybe this will stop, Lucy said. If you did that, then we'll lose, Fox said, putting a hand on his shoulder. We will lose both the war and you. You are one of us, Lucy, and we will not let you go. Fox Coon, Lucy said as she looked at him, touched by her words. She also noticed that he didn't add San to her name again. She then placed her hand on his that was on her shoulder, a slight smile on her face. Thank you. Suddenly, before anything else could happen, the ground began to shake. Surprised, they thought it was an earthquake until they heard a loud hum outside. Suddenly, Jet, who was watching, ran towards the basement, a surprised expression on her face. This is bad, she exclaimed in panic. Everyone, come outside, quickly. They all rushed out quickly, and what they saw shocked them. Looming towards Magnolia was a giant, shadowy figure. Fortunately, they evacuated the city, so that no one would get hurt in their conflict. As the figure approached, her eyes widened as if she were the Phantom Lord's guild, but she had robotic legs and arms, lumbering towards Fairy Tail. What the hell is that? Wakaba exclaimed. Greetings, Fairy Tail, said Jose Porla's voice, surprising the wizards. Do you think you could escape after Makarov's humiliating defeat? Think again, now tremble in fear of Phantom Lord's greatest weapon. Now, if you don't want to be destroyed, hand over Lucy Hartfilia. Lucy stood there, her eyes wide as she looked up at the giant robot before looking down. She began to think about giving up. Her friends didn't need to go through this just for selfish reasons. Just as she was about to give up, someone stepped forward. How about you eat shit? Karama exclaimed, turning into his human form. We're not giving you blondie. Yes. Lucy is one of us. Out of here. Everyone. Lucy said as she started to cry again. Then so be it, Jose said then prepared to be destroyed by the Jupiter. After she said that, a cannon appeared from the middle of the robot, aimed at Fairy Tail, and it started to glow. Shit, he's going to shoot us. Everyone, take cover. Urza exclaimed as she prepared to run forward, to block the cannon, only for someone to run past her. Fox? Fox ran towards the Ghost Lord's weapon before leaping into the air as the cannon fired. 
shadow grace, black vortex, he exclaimed as a shadowy black circle appeared in front of Fox. The explosion hit the shadow, absorbing itself into it. They all watched in shock and amazement as Fox defended them from Jupiter. Fox suddenly growled as he felt his black vortex being overwhelmed. Just as the cannon finally ended, the dark circle exploded, sending Fox crashing to the ground. He fell a few meters before finally righting himself, stopping in a crouch, only a few scratches on him. Fox, are you okay? Urza said as she and a few others ran towards him. I'm fine, Fox said, easily getting to his feet. Wow, how impressive, Jose said from the robot. To think that there is one of you who can stop Jupiter, but that was lucky. Give Lucy heartphilia or you will suffer the same fate as Makarov. Like Karama said, Fox said, facing the robot. Eat shit, Jose Porla. Very well, we'll give you 15 minutes, Jose said. I'm giving you a chance before we destroy you with a stronger Jupiter. Not unless we stop you, Fox said when Jose ended communications. And how do you plan to do that? Gray asked, looking at Fox. We destroyed it from the inside, Fox said before suddenly kneeling to the ground, grunting in pain. Fox coon, Lucy exclaimed worriedly, running towards him. Are you okay? Yeah, just, stunned, Fox growled as he gripped the ground, concentrating on his breathing to recover. We need to stop Jupiter. In that, Natsu exclaimed, with Happy carrying him into the air. Come on, Happy. Yes. They all watched as Natsu and Happy flew towards the cannon. Suddenly, dark ghoul-like creatures emerged from the giant robot and headed towards the fairy tale mages. What the hell are these? One of them exclaimed as the demons flung them down like vultures. These are the demons born from the magic of Jose Porla. Urza exclaimed as she sliced one with her sword. Everyone, be careful. The wizards started to fight, shooting the demons with their magic, but they keep reforming and attacking. Many demons focused on Lucy, trying to grab her, only to be stopped by Karama, Urza, Grey, Ur, Lisanna, Flare, Levy, and Elfman, who surrounded her and Fox. Karama, take Lucy Sand to a safe place and protect her, Fox ordered as he stood up, feeling strong enough to stand up. Right, Karama said, turning into a cat and grabbing Lucy by her shirt, and lifting her up. Wait, he exclaimed, not wanting to leave them alone. You are in constant danger if you stay here, Lucy San, Fox said as he looked at the structure. It's safer for you to be somewhere else. Lucy wanted to protest, but Karama quickly pulled her away from the battle, easily dodging the demons. Some were right behind them, only to be stopped by Fox. Shadow Grace, Shadow Shuriken. The ghouls were embedded with shadow projectiles, which seemed to absorb the ghouls. Fox then raised her hands above his head, causing the shadows to rise slowly into the air. Shadow Grace Secret Arts, Giant Black Hole. The shadows formed a round, spinning mass, and suddenly all the demons were being sucked into her, to the amazement of her comrades. Soon, the black hole dissipated, taking the demons with it. Wow, that was amazing, Fox San. Levy exclaimed as Fox lowered his arms. How did you defeat those ghouls? Even Urza San couldn't do that. My magic, Shadow Grace, devours all forms of magic, Fox explained, making the people around him look shocked. These demons, created by magic, will simply be devoured. I have never heard of such magic before, Urza said. Not surprising, since I created it, Fox said, surprising them even more. Suddenly, the Jupiter cannon began to light up, much to the horror of the fairy tale mages. Fox, Urza, and Ur readied their strongest spells to block it, but before it went to the fire, there was an explosion and the cannon suddenly went down, the light dimming until it was gone. Natsu did it. Lisanna cheered. I guess Flamebrain can come in handy sometimes, Gray said with a smile. So, did you somehow manage to stop both my demons and Jupiter? Impressive for the trash, but don't think you've won. Either you hit Lucy Herephilia or I'll destroy Magnolia City. A large magic circle suddenly appeared in front of the robot, and some of his eyes widened as they realized what it was. Abyss Breaker. Urza exclaimed in shock. Are you planning to destroy the city? We have to stop him. Gray exclaimed. Having, said a voice. Surprised, they all looked up and saw Lucy, but in a red dress. I'm here. I'll give up, so please stop this. Look nay. Lisanna exclaimed quietly. What is she doing? She pretends to be Lucy to stop the war, Ur said with a frown. We should stop her, Elfman exclaimed. Lol. Jose Porla suddenly burst out laughing. Do you really think I'm stupid enough to believe a sad attempt to trick me, Mirajane Strauss-san? Lucy looks the same as she gasps as her eyes open, the transformation cancelling, revealing herself to be Mirajane. She stood there, surprised that all she could do was stop immediately. 
Tears welled up in her eyes as she felt useless to help her guilt. If only she could control my magic, she thought to herself as she knelt on the ground as cried. She didn't notice a ghoul sneak up behind her. Just as she was about to attack her, Fox appeared at her side, grabbing the ghoul with his right hand, surprising Mirajane. You've done all you could, Mirajane San, Fox said as she formed a small black hole that sucked in the demon. Stand back and let us do the rest. Fox faced the giant robot, standing next to Urza, Grey, Elfman, and Ur, while Lisanna, Levy, and Flair went to Mirajane. It's time we end this war, Fox said before he and the others charged toward the robot. When they were close enough, Fox suddenly jumped up and started running to the side, surprising everyone. Can you run on walls? Gray and Elfman exclaimed. Where are you going Foxy? Urza called. I'm going straight to Jose, Fox replied as he kept running. I'll see you all inside. Wait, Urza called out, only to be stopped by Ur. Don't worry, Ur said with a smile. That brat, he's stronger than he lets on. Urza looked at Fox before nodding and leading the others into Jupiter, with Gray's help creating a path for them to enter. As Fox ran towards the robot, she suddenly felt a presence. She stopped when the sky suddenly darkened and rain began to fall. Interesting, she commented as she faced off. Drip, drop, drip, drop, said a voice. She turned and saw the girl from before, Juvia, a member of Phantom Lord. Hello again, Mr. Shadow. I don't want to fight you, Fox said to the girl, who seemed surprised. I just want to stop Jose. Tell me, how do I stop Abyss Breaker? I'm sorry, but Juvia can't tell, Juvia replied in an emotionless tone. Now, Juvia must defeat Mr. Shadow. She raised her hand and water suddenly formed around Fox, trapping him in a circular prison of water. Hem, how nostalgic, Fox thought calmly as he looked around the prison. He remembered that something like this happened on his first C rank mission turned a rank. Give it up, Juvia said as she looked at Fox. Nothing escapes Juvia's water lock. Fox simply clasped his hands together, forming a seal, confusing Juvia. He then released a shockwave of chakra, exploding the water prison, much to Juvia's surprise. Did he break Juvia's water lock? Impossible, she thought to herself before Fox drew some blood from his palms with her fingernails, slid them over the seals on his arms, and pulled out a handful of shuriken. He launched the projectiles at Juvia, but they curved around him. She looked confused before Fox lowered his arms and saw something thin and shiny attached to the shuriken. She watched as the shuriken flew around her and saw that the cables bound her. Instead of being tied down by the cables, she walked past her, surprising Fox as she pulled the projectiles at him. The wires, went through you, Fox said, surprised. Yes, Juvia said, looking sad as she looked out at the rain. Juvia is made of rain. Nothing can touch Juvia. We'll see, Fox said as she resealed her shuriken and cables. Many have tried, but none have managed to touch Juvia, she said in a depressed tone. Then I'll be the first, Fox said before attacking Juvia. He laced his left hand with chakra, which he used to grab onto Juvia. He expected her to dodge, but she just stood there, not seeming worried. She expected her hand to go through it, like everything in life. He then was surprised when Fox grabbed her. Squeeze. Uh. Fox, for the first time in a long time, froze when he found her hand clutching her right breast. Sure, he taunted Lucy and grabbed her butt a few times, but that was only because he was picking on a friend of hers. This was an accident. Soft, he thought to himself before Juvia moaned again. Her expression was different from the stoic, emotionless expression a minute ago. Her pale cheeks were flushed, her eyes nearly closed and slightly teary, her mouth slightly open as she gasped. S sorry. Fox exclaimed as he quickly released him and stumbled backward. Th that was an accident. I didn't mean to grab you. Well, I did, but not like this, Batbeo. Juvia wasn't listening. She was busy panting, kneeling on the floor, holding her breast, still flushed. Juvia. Juvia was touched, she thought to herself, still shocked by what happened. For as long as she remembered, no one could touch her due to her magic. People started avoiding her because of it, calling her weird and gloomy. And soon, the endless rain began, and when people connected with her, they pushed her away from her. Wherever she goes, she brought the rain, and nothing she can do can stop it, so she was chased away until she was taken in by Jose Porla, and despite the hostility and hostile atmosphere, she found some comrades, like the members of Element 4, Gajil and the two newcomers. But she was lonely despite having comrades, since all the people she attracted to her were perverted and weird, and they couldn't touch her. Even if she finds someone who overlooks her body of water, they leave her because the rain follows her. Hey, look, Fox said, calming down. 
I don't want to fight you. I just want to stop this war before anyone else gets hurt. So please step back. J. Juvia can't do that, Juvia said, calming her heart as she stood up. Juvia has a mission. Then I apologize for hurting you, Fox said before accusing. Water cutter. Juvia exclaimed as she shot out a blade made of water. Fox easily dodged the attack. Juvia started throwing blades of water at Fox, but he kept dodging them, spinning and jumping into the air. Shadow grace, shadow restriction. Fox exclaimed as his shadow charged toward Juvia. Juvia, after being touched, became wary of the shadows and began to dodge, her body turning into the water as she jumped to dodge the shadows. She became aware that the shadows were moving at a slow pace, trying to follow her. Mr. Shadow seems to be slow, Juvia said as she fired the water blade at Fox, who used a shadow to block it. Your shadows can't keep up with Juvia. How observant of you, Fox complimented. Actually, my shadow grace isn't as fast as I want it to be. But it's a weakness I can easily cover. The shadows returned to Fox, who disappeared in a blur, shocking Juvia. Before she could react, an arm wrapped around her neck behind her. Surprised, she turned her head and saw Fox. My magic may be slow, but I'm far from it, she said, tightening her grip. And since I've proven, um, before, I can touch you. So give up. I don't want to hurt you. L let it go. Juvia exclaimed, blushing at the close contact, still not used to being touched. She began to smoke, causing Fox to let go of the intense heat. Don't touch Juvia so casually. Fox seemed surprised by his reaction as he jumped to avoid getting burned. She was familiar to him, the way she reacted to being touched. Then it occurred to him why she looked familiar. Retrospective scene. Five-year-old Naruto was walking through the park, his head down as he passed the children playing. He noticed that many of them turned away from him and hurled taunts and insults at him. He just looked down, trying to make himself smaller. Suddenly, he felt a hand on his shoulder. Startled, he quickly jumped up, turned around, and saw a girl his age, confused by his reaction. Hey, are you okay? She asked, tilting her head. W who are you? She asked, looking a little scared. I'm Sayuri Uchiha. Sayuri introduced herself with a small smile. I was wondering if you want to play with me. You ask me. Naruto asked, looking a little unsure. Sure why not? Sayuri said with a smile as she offered her hand to him. He seemed confused by it before taking it. She looked up at him with wide eyes, feeling how warm his hand is. Come on. Oh yeah, what's your name? I it's Naruto, Naruto said as he allowed himself to be swept away by her. Flashback end. I see. Fox said as he faced Juvia. You were also alone. W what? Juvia asked, surprised by her statement. Suddenly, Fox turned his back on her and started walking. I'm not going to fight you. Juvia watched Fox's figure walk away before getting angry. The rain formed around her, forming giant tentacles waving furiously. Don't turn your back on Juvia, she exclaimed as she used the tentacles to attack Fox. The tentacles hit Fox, who didn't bother to fight back. He stumbled when the tentacles hit him, but he kept walking. Don't insult Juvia, fight Juvia. She kept attacking Fox, who kept his back to her, grunting a little as the tentacles hit him painfully, but he kept moving. Juvia won't let you tease her like that. Juvia exclaimed as the tentacles fused into a sharp tendril. She then shot the tendril at Fox, who kept walking. Suddenly, the robot building shook rapidly, tripping Juvia and causing her to drop the tendril of water. She stumbled a few feet toward the edge before losing her balance. She was wide-eyed as she began to fall off the side of the robot. Even if she was made of water, a fall from this height would do a lot of damage to her. She tried to grab the edge but lost it. Suddenly, one of her hands grabbed her, saving her. She looked over and saw Fox, who led her to safety. When she was safely in the robot, she lay on her back, panting from nearly falling to her death. She turned to Fox, who didn't seem bothered by the attacks she made. Why? She asked as she sat down. Why did you save Juvia? Because I'm just like you, Fox replied as he looked up at the sky, her headband getting wet from the rain. It's painful to be alone, scary even. That's why I don't want to hurt you. Maybe. We could even be friends. Juvia looked at Fox with wide eyes when he said that, in front of her. There was no guile in her words, sounding sincere. She started to blush as the rain stopped, the gray clouds parting to let in the sun. Oh? The rain stopped, Fox said as she faced off. I like the rain, but nothing beats sunshine. Don't you agree? Juvia's eyes sparkled as she looked at Fox, the sunlight making him look amazing in her eyes. 
She started to blush until her eyes turned into heart shapes and passed out with a look of love on her face, which was steaming. Are you okay? Fox asked, touching her cheek, getting no response. Fox then turned to the source of the tremor, having felt this power before. Elfman. She quickly ran towards the source until she was near the robot's shoulder, where a giant horned monster was holding Mirajane and Lisanna, who were captured by Saul to be used as hostages. Elfman. Fox exclaimed, drawing the monster's attention. Are you going to lose control again? I thought you wouldn't let this happen, not after you nearly killed your sisters. The monster seemed to stop moving when Fox said that. Mira Jane and Lisanna looked at her brother as the monster seemed to struggle internally. You're stronger than this, Elfman, Fox said as he stood there, arms crossed. Don't make the same mistake you almost made three years ago. Deep in the beast's mind, Elfman hovered in the dark, unable to move. It was the same three years ago, I was useless, weak. His sisters could completely control his magic from taking over him, and he couldn't. He always felt a bit self-conscious about it, not being as good as his brothers and not being useful to them in the mission. Suddenly, he heard Fox's voice, and a vision from three years ago appeared before him, his first S-ranked mission with his brothers, where he nearly killed his little sister. Retrospective scene. Elfman, Mira Jane, injured and younger, wept as she watched her little brother lose control of the beast, wreaking havoc on the city they were supposed to save. Stop please. The beast just roared as she swung her massive fists, destroying a few buildings. Mira Jane tried to get to her feet, but the pain in her right arm stopped her. This wasn't supposed to happen. It was supposed to be a simple mission, to show her younger brother how an S-ranked mission goes, she didn't expect this. The beast was too powerful for them and trying to stop it, Elfman used his magic to try to take over the monster. He lost control and now he was rampaging. Elf knee. Lisanna exclaimed, flying towards them in the form of a cute pink bird. She was busy evacuating civilians when the beast attacked. When she saw what happened to Elfman, she quickly flew at him, hoping to stop him. She landed in front of the beast, transforming back to normal. Lisanna. Get away from there. Mira Jane cried. Don't worry, Mirane, Lisanna said with a small smile as she looked at the beast. Elf knee won't hurt me. The beast lumbered toward her, growling softly, watching her as he walked toward her. Elf knee, I know you're still there, Lisanna said in a soft tone. I know you won't hurt me or Mirane. You are stronger than this. Now, go back to normal so we can go home. The beast blinked at Lisanna, stopping. Lisanna smiled, thinking that she had caught up with him. Suddenly, the beast swung her huge claws, striking Lisanna. Lisan. Mira Jane cried in shock as she stared at Lisanna's flying body with wide eyes before her body suddenly turned into a shattered log. W what? That was close, said a voice next to her. She turned and was surprised to see Fox at her side, carrying a shocked Lisanna in her arms. You're lucky we were in the area. Fox? Mira Jane said in shock as Fox walked towards the beast. Hey, come back. It's too dangerous. Fox ignored her as she continued to walk towards the beast, who saw him and roared in anger, charging at him, raising her huge arms to crush him. When his fists hit the ground, Fox was nowhere to be seen. Suddenly, the beast began to glow and shrink, revealing Elfman, who fell to the ground, only to be caught by Fox, who was under the beast. You need to be stronger than this, Elfman, Fox said as he carried the big man towards the two sisters. After all, you are a man. A man is supposed to protect his family from him. Fox then put the exhausted Elfman on the ground before kneeling beside Mira Jane, gently taking her arm. H. Hey. Mira Jane said, blushing at the surprising contact. You're hurt, Fox said in a soft tone as his hands glowed, trying to diagnose his arm. He nodded before massaging it a bit, causing Mira Jane to groan in pain until she disappeared. He then began to apply bandages. Why are you helping us? Mira Jane asked as Fox began tending to Elfman and Lisanna. Why do you ask that? Fox asked in a confused tone. We're comrades, right? Mira Jane's eyes widened at those words, as did Lisanna's. Suddenly, Mira Jane's face turned red as Fox finished bandaging Elfman. Mira Jane's eyes widened at those words, as did Lisanna's. Suddenly, Mira Jane's face turned red as Fox finished bandaging Elfman. You have strong magic, Elfman, Fox said as he started to walk away. Do not waste it. Suddenly, Karama flew towards Fox, landing on his head. Did you find anything, Karama? Fox asked as they continued walking. Yes, documents about monsters, like the beast, that are part of an illegal monster ring. They found three names, Karama replied, handing Fox a scroll. Then let's go get them, Fox said before raising a hand towards the Strauss brothers. 
See you guys at the guild. Oh, and this never happened, okay? Flashback end. You're right, Elfman said as he looked at his hands, clenching them into fists. He is letting himself lose control again, to hurt the people he cares about. What the hell am I doing? I'm a man. A man must protect the family from him. He began to glow, dispelling the darkness around him. Meanwhile, the beast began to glow and turned to Elfman, who seemed calm and collected. Mira Jane and Lisanna ran towards him as he stumbled a bit. Elf knee. Are you alright? Lisanna asked in a worried tone as Elfman looked at them, smiling. Of course. Elfman stated, I am a man, after all. He then turned to Fox, who nodded. Elfman smiled and nodded at the man who helped him a lot. Hem. Fox said, noticing that the Abyss Breaker's spell was slowing down. It's slowing down. Yes, Lisanna said with a nod. We discovered that the spell is powered by Element 4. I see, Fox said, turning to Juvia and Saul. Beating them stops the spell. Who else is left? Arya of the Wind, Mirajane said. Natsu-san and the others have already taken care of Fire Totemaru. Suddenly Fox froze, confusing the others. Before they could ask what was wrong, Jose's voice echoed through the robot. Bawahahaha. Guess what fairy trash. Lucy Hartfilia is now in our possession. Ah. Bastard. Let her go. Lucy San. Karama San. Lee Sana said in shock. Since we have her, we have no use for your guild. You may have slowed down Abyss Breaker by defeating three of the four elements, but as long as we have Arya, you can't hope to stop your destruction. The broadcast ended as all the fairy tale mages panicked, yelling to release Lucy as they fought the demons. Damn Jose. Elfman growled. We need to find Arya and beat him. But we need to find Lucy Chan and Karama San, Mirajane said in a worried tone. What should we do f? She stopped when she saw Fox. Lee Sana and Elfman followed her gaze and felt a chill as they looked at Fox, who was surrounded by a red aura, his entire body trembling in silent anger. F. Fox Kun? Mirajane said in a worried tone. Jose Porla. Fox said angrily before disappearing in a blur, shocking the three brothers. Fox, the brothers exclaimed as they hurried inside. Meanwhile, on the upper level of the guild robot, a battered Lucy was pinned to the wall by metal staples, and around her were daggers stabbed into the wall. Another knife hit the wall, close to her face, but she didn't flinch. Gee you're a bit tougher than I thought, Gajil said, throwing a knife into his hand. If it was someone else, they would have to shit their pants. Why you shouldn't do that, Gajil San, one of the Phantom Lord members said in a concerned and scared tone. M. Master Jose would be mad if he he gets who gurg. The man was suddenly hit by a pole and sent flying. The others barely jumped out of the way as the pole back toward Gajil. If Master Jose gets mad, then he'll blame you, idiots, Gajil said as he walked towards Lucy. Hey, that's not fair. Damn it. Where are Neji and Tenton? He'll hear them. Gajil ignored them as he grabbed Lucy's hair, lifting her head up. She winced, but she still had the determined look in her eyes. She was starting to piss Gajil off. Her right arm turned into a sword and he stabbed close to her face. But he held her defiant gaze. Soon, she began to laugh, confusing the others when Gajil withdrew his arm from her. What are you laughing at, blonde? Gajil said, sounding annoyed. Do you really think I'm afraid of this? Lucy said as she smiled at Gajil. I've been trained worse than this. In fact, you should be scared if he gets here. Afraid of who? Gajil asked with a smirk. Fairy tale's strongest mage, Lucy said with a confident smile. Fox. Meanwhile, Urza gasped as Wind Arya fell behind her, defeated and bleeding on the ground, her blindfold gone. She attempted to do the same thing she did to Makarov, but Urza was more prepared and managed to beat him, but not without difficulty. Urza. He turned around and saw Natsu, happy, gray, and Ur running towards her. Ur was the only one who didn't seem angry, but Natsu and Gray seemed a little rough from fighting Totomaru of fire, with Totomaru using Natsu's fire against Gray since he couldn't hurt Natsu. Before Totomaru could do any real damage though, Ur easily defeated him, freezing him before he could do anything. Awesome, you beat that fat girl. Natsu cheered as he lightly kicked the guy who hurt his teacher. Now, Abyss Breaker stops, she said as she slowly got up. Only Gajil and Jose Porla remain. Suddenly, there was an intense pressure that suffocated Natsu, Gray, Happy, and Urza. Only Ur was slightly okay, though he was sweating a bit. They turned to see Jose Porla walking towards them, a nasty grin on his face as he walked towards the Magi. Well I'm here, fairy trashes, he said as he released a dark aura. Now what? Meanwhile, Karama was on the ground, his body pinned down by Neji's attack. He growled at being so careless. 
Previously, he was going to one of the guild's safe houses, but they were suddenly ambushed by Gajil. He managed to fight back, and Lucy helped a bit thanks to his training. But then, Neji and Tenton sneak up behind them and attack. They knocked Lucy down before she could use the heavenly keys on her, causing her to drop them. He was about to attack, but Gajil hit him in the head and Neji sealed his chakra path, immobilizing him. And now here he was, away from Lucy, being questioned about Fox, but he refused to speak. I don't want to hurt you any more than necessary, Neji said as he grabbed Karama by the back of his coat. Tell me, who is this Fox? How did he get the scroll? How is he related to Naruto Uzumaki? Kiss my furry ass, Karama said with a smile. Neji just looked annoyed when he dropped Karama. Tenten was trying to open the scroll, but he couldn't unfold it. He saw the seal on him, preventing him from opening it. I can't make heads out of this seal, he said as he scratched his head. This fox is a high-level seal master. Perhaps better than Jiraiya-sama. You guys are from the leaf people, right? Kurama asked, making them both look at him. How do you know? Neji asked, eyes narrowing. From the eyes and the hair, you must be Neji Hayuga, Kurama continued, surprising them. And from the hairstyle, your Tenten, I don't think he knows your last name. Who is he? Neji demanded with a look lit by his Byakugan. Fox is not the enemy you think he is, Kurama said as he looked at Neji. You are not bad people. All we want is to prevent Jose Porla from taking Blondie. You mean to rescue her from you guys? Tenten replied. Bailing out. Her father asked Porla San to rescue Lucy San from you, fairy tale, Tenten said, crossing her arms. Suddenly Kurama burst out laughing, surprising them both. What is he so funny? Do you believe that shit? Kurama said as he calmed down. I've seen Blondie ever since she joined the guild, always smiling and laughing with us. Do you really think she's a victim? You're being played. Phantom Lord is famous for being a guild of liars and thieves, threatening people and causing fights. Aren't you the same people? Tenten asked. True, but we don't do it on purpose, Kurama admitted. We did not want this war. You two are being deceived by Jose Porla. The two of them looked at each other before, contemplating his words. Meanwhile, Urza growled as she blocked Jose Porla's attacks, but she was thrown. She slowly got up, using his sword for support. Natsu and Gray were struggling to get up but were being restrained by Jose Porla's magic, making them unable to escape. Ur was able to hold his position, but because he hadn't practiced in years, he was beginning to weaken. Happy was by Natsu's side, supporting him, but he was shaking violently. Awesome. Jose Porla exclaimed as he watched the magician's fight. To think that your trash can really put up a fight. Hem, I wonder if your guild can take any punishment? His eyes widened when Jose suddenly raised his arms. Outside, the wizards were still fighting the demons, when the robot suddenly began to move. They watched in surprise as the robot walked towards the damaged guild. Hears, Kana exclaimed as her eyes widened in shock as the robot raised its robotic arms. Having, the mages started screaming and screaming as the robot began to pummel the guild building, slowly destroying it. The nearby wizards began to retreat, pulling those who refused to move, while the others fired at the robot, trying to stop it, but to no avail. 4. Kana cried when Macau and Wakaba stopped her, tears welling up in her eyes as her home of so many years soon fell to rubble. G-A-H-A-H-A-H-A. Jose Porla laughed at the destruction of the guild building through Lacrima. He was enjoying the looks of horror and surprise from the fairy tale mages. It seems obvious who wins this war. I'll make sure your faces are filled with despair as I destroy you all. He unleashed all large amount of dark energy, darkening the air, almost blocking out the light. His eyes glowed an unnatural red as he raised his arms, preparing the final blow to the weakened fairies. Suddenly, intense pressure pushed the aura away, surprising Jose Porla, and making him sweat. He suddenly saw the image of an angry giant fox revealing its sharp fangs, snarling for blood. He wasn't the only one who felt that. Urza, Natsu, Gray, Happy, and Ur felt the foreboding pressure, but she felt protective towards them, making them breathe easier. They then turned to the source of the pressure and saw the figure walking towards them. Jose Porla, Fox said as he walked around the room, radiating bloodlust. His body was trembling with rage, his fists clenched so tightly they were breaking. FF Fox San? Urza said, surprised when Fox walked towards Jose Porla. She had never felt so much bloodthirst for him before, he was always so calm and collected. She felt him get angry before, but not to this point. I is that Fox? Gray said, trembling from the pressure. S scared, Happy said as she hugged Natsu, who was looking at Fox with wide eyes. 
So, are you the illusory fox? Jose Porla said, overcoming his surprise, mocking. I've heard of you through the grapevine. To think that someone so unknown can be so strong. Your powers are wasted on a trash guild like Fairy Tail. Join Phantom Lord instead. Once we got the money from the Heartphilia family, Phantom Lord will rise to the top. You have finished? Fox said in an indifferent tone. Good. Because those are your last words. I'm going to break you, Jose Porla. You? Break me. Jose Porla said with disdain. I offered you the opportunity to join the winning team, but it seems you are a fool. Then you will perish together with this trash. Suddenly, he felt immense pain in his face before he was thrown, crashing into the walls. He looked up and saw Fox where he was standing earlier, with his fist outstretched. So fast. Urza thought with wide eyes. I didn't see him move. Damn brat. Jose Porla growled, unleashing his aura once more. You will pay for that. Death wave. He fired waves of purple lightning and weaved them like ribbons, targeting Fox. Urza yelled at him to move, as it was that very movement that carried her, Natsu, Gray, and her easily. But her eyes widened when she saw Fox just walking towards the dangerous attack. Then, to her surprise, she passed between the deadly waves of magic, weaving her body slightly, making it appear as if they passed through him. What? Jose Porla exclaimed in shock as he moved the waves faster, but it looks like they are slipping. Whoa, a voice exclaimed, drawing the attention of Urza, Natsu, Happy, Gray, and Ur. They saw the Strauss brothers, looking a bit tired, but still standing, watching the fight in amazement. How is Fox doing that? What are you doing here? Urza asked as the brothers began to grab the weakened wizards and lead them to safety. We'll explain later, Mirajane said as she supported Urza and helped her out of the room while Elfman grabbed Natsu and Gray while Lisanna picked up Happy and Ur. Shadow Grace, Shadow Shuriken. Fox exclaimed as he fired a barrage of Shadow Shuriken at Jose Porla, cutting through waves of purple magic and hitting the evil guild master. Damn trash fairy. Jose Porla exclaimed in anger as he bled from the attack. Die. Shadow restraint. Jose Porla then fired streams of purple energy at Fox, which engulfed him. Jose Porla, grinning madly, fired a larger wave of death, which hit Fox head on. Fox Coon. Mira Jane gasped in horror as her diadem fell to the floor, severed in half. Ha 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 ha. How's that trash fairy? Jose Porla exclaimed in delight as he looked at the corpse of, a giant piece of rubble? What? Suddenly, she felt killing intent behind him. When she turned around, she saw a pair of demonic red eyes. He then got hit in the face, sending him flying through the air. That was for the old man, Fox said, his right arm outstretched before withdrawing it. He suddenly appeared next to Jose Porla and hit him again in the face. That was for Lucy. He another punch from the right of him, hitting Jose Porla in the stomach, causing him to spit a little blood. That was for Karama. He kept hitting Jose Porla with his right hand, breaking his bones, hitting his teeth, and spitting blood. That was for Mirajane, Kana, Lisana, Elfman, Macau, Wakaba, Visca, Alzac, Warren, Lackey, Vegeter, Redis, Chica, Levy. Jet, Droy, Natsu, Gray, Urza, Happy, Flare, Ur, our guild this is all for my comrades you hurt, you bastard. The group watched in amazement as Fox, Fairy Tail's supposed C-class mage, was beating Jose Porla, a guild master and member of the Ten Holy Mages, like a rag doll. This can't be real, Gray said in disbelief. Amazing, Lisanna said in awe. I knew he was strong. Natsu exclaimed, looking excited. Hem? Urza suddenly noticed something as she watched Fox fight. Fox San is using his right hand. You're right, Mirajane said through astonishment and shock. What's so weird about that? Gray asked, looking at the two girls. For as long as I know, Fox Kuhn never uses his right arm. Mirajane said remembering those times Fox was in the guild, he ate ramen with his left hand, poured sake with his left, and stroked Karama with his left. I've only seen him fight his left, Urza said, remembering the time they fought pirates. He deflected and hit the pirates with just his left hand. Dot his right hand, isn't normal. How is this happening? Jose Porla thought of the pain as each blow sent him to the brink of unconsciousness. How is this weakling beating me? I am the Ghost Lord Guild Master. It is nothing but trash. To die, Jose Porla exclaimed as his eyes turned red, increasing his magical power. Dark Pulse. He released a wave of purple energy larger than Death Wave at Fox. Fox simply raised his right hand and blocked the attack, not even moving an inch from where he was standing. I am possible, Jose Porla said as he parried the attack, looking at Fox, whose right sleeve, bandages, and gloves were destroyed. 
When the smoke cleared, everyone saw his right hand, dark orange fur with sharp black nails. On the palm of his hand was a black fairy tail mark. W. Who are you? Jose Porla asked as he backed away. Suddenly, Fox appeared behind him, and, before he could react, he kicked him into the air. Fox then raised his right arm, creating a spinning sphere of red and blue energy. I am the demon fox from Fairy Tail, Fox said as he formed the Rasengan and jumped towards Jose Porla. Vermilion Rasengan. He drove the sphere of condensed chakra into Jose Porla's back, causing him to scream in agony as he was pushed towards the ceiling. Jose Porla screamed as he felt his attack destroy him completely. It is as if a part of his being is being destroyed when the crimson energy invades his body. Meanwhile, on the upper level of the robot, the members tried to balance themselves as they felt the entire building shake. The tremor caused Lucis' restraints to fall off, freeing her from the wall. What the hell is going on? Master Jose is also trying to destroy us. Hey, is the ground, cracked? Gajil, sensing something from below, immediately jumped up as the ground exploded, sending the rest of the mages to his feet of him. His eyes widened as he saw Jose Porla fly off the ground, his back seared and bent in an inhuman way. His eyes were wide and white and his mouth released a silent cry of pain. A master Jose, the wizards exclaimed in shock as they recognized their master, although they did not expect to see him in such a state. Suddenly, they were assaulted by intense pressure, causing them to freeze. They were trembling, sweating, and unable to breathe, as they imagined dying brutally. Soon, they couldn't handle it and passed out. Gigi, Gajil said with a smile, though sweat dripped from his forehead as the source of the pressure was revealed once the dust cleared. Fox Kun, Lucy said weakly with a smile when she saw Fox. She then noticed his red eyes and orange arm. Why you hack damn trash cough? Jose Porla exclaimed as he coughed up blood. He tried to get to his feet but found that he couldn't move. He couldn't feel his body nor could he feel any magic. M my body. M my magic. W what have you done? I destroyed your magic container and broke your spine, Fox answered in a cold tone as he looked at Jose Porla, whose face was filled with horror and despair. That's the price you get for playing fairy tale. Live to be pathetic, Jose Porla. Fox then turned to Lucy and saw the battered state she was in, causing a vein to appear on the side of her head. He then turned to Gajil, who seems to have frozen at the sight of those red eyes. You, are a monster, Gajil said with a smile, hiding the feeling of fear from him. Every part of him told him to run as fast as he could, but the dragon slayer in him wanted to fight him. This should be fun. His entire body began to glow green as a magic circle appeared below him, covering his body with metallic scales. He then charged at Fox, his right arm turning into a saw blade. She charged at Fox, swinging her sword at him. Suddenly his whole world spun before he realized what had happened. He was on his back, with the armor on his right face, his chest and abdomen cracked. W what, he said as he felt intense pain where he was hit, causing the armor to shatter, revealing bruised flesh on him. Fox then stepped on his chest as he readied a Rasengan. Fox, with a cold look in his red eyes, raised his arm, intent clear from him. He was about to plunge the Rasengan into Gajil's exposed chest when he felt a sense of fear near him. He looked at the fountain and saw Lucy looking up at him with wide, scared eyes. That shocked him, calming his anger. Having one of his comrades look at him like that made him aware of how close he was to committing one of Fairy Tale's greatest sins, the act of murder. He closed his eyes and calmed himself with deep breaths. The aura slowly disappeared, just like the Rasengan. When he opened his eyes, they were no longer red. He then walked away from Gajil and towards the battered Lucy. Are you alright, Lucy San? He asked in a soft tone, kneeling beside her. Lucy looked at Fox, forgetting her fear as she looked into his eyes, mesmerized. The terrifying reds were replaced by eyes as blue as the sky, looking at her with concern. Why yes, she stammered herself, looking sheepishly at the ground. I'm fine. Can you stand up? Fox asked as he got up. Lucy tried to, but her body protested, making her wince. Suddenly, she felt like she was being carried in a princess style. She looked at Fox, her face flushed red as he gently picked her up. Fox Coon? She exclaimed in shock. You've been through a lot today, Fox said as he looked at the damage he did. He then sighed, causing Lucy to look at him, noticing the sad gleam in her eyes. I think I need more training. Fox Coon? Lucy said, making Fox turn to her, and saw his smiling happily, but weakly. Thank you. Fox's eyes seemed to light up at his words before closing, turning into smiles. Suddenly, she felt some people, and one of them was Karama. 
He tensed as he turned in the direction and saw Neji, Tenton, and a released Karama. Karama, were you hurt? Fox asked his partner, who shook his head. I'm a little bruised, but nothing I haven't handled before, he said before landing on Fox's head. Hem, where's your headband protector? It broke, Fox said before facing Neji and Tenton, who was helping Gajil to his feet, supporting him. It has been a long time. Naruto. Neji said, disbelief present in his expression. Is it, is it really you? I'm going for Fox these days, Fox replied before looking at the scroll. Hand over the scroll, Neji-san. What? Neji said as he held the ceiling scroll protectively. But we can find a way home with the ceiling scroll. It's impossible for you to return home, even with the scroll, Fox said, holding out his hand. Now give me the scroll. This scroll belongs to Konoha, our home, Neji said. And as I said, you can never go back to Konoha, or to the elemental nations, Fox said. If you got here the same way I did, then you have no hope of ever going back there. Now give me the scroll. I can't do that Naruto, Neji said as he placed the scroll behind him. Even if it's you. I wasn't asking, Fox said as the scroll was suddenly on his back, thanks to his shadows. H how did you? Neji said in shock as he didn't see him move. Then he watched Fox walk away. He was about to give chase when he felt a hand on his shoulder. He looked up and saw Tenton shaking her head at him, still supporting Gajil. Seeing that he needed medical attention, Neji sighed before the three of them disappeared in a swirl of wind and leaves. As Fox led Lucy and Kurama towards the exit, the wind shifted behind him before anyone appeared, a giant fat man in a green cape, gold shirt, and scarf, with a top hat to match his cape. He was grinning madly, his strange cross-shaped pupils staring at Fox. How tragic, he thought happily as tears escaped his eyes. May you experience the same fate as your master. Truly tragic. Just as he was about to cast the same spell that did a lot of damage to Makarov, he stopped himself as intense pressure made him break out in a cold sweat. Take Jose Porla and get out of here, Fox said as he turned his head and looked at Arya with red eyes. Do it, before you really piss me off. Arya could see a giant fox monster with four tails moving wildly behind him, its fang ripping out on him as her red eyes glared at him. Unable to hold on, Arya passed out. Well done, Fox, said a voice, making him look up and see Makarov walking towards him, looking better than before. Old man, Fox greeted, his eyes returning to normal. I'm glad to see you're better. Yes, Makarov said as he looked at the broken form of Jose Porla. I have Mistogan to thank for that. Thank you for protecting our guild. Of course, Fox said as they walked back to the others through the hole. It is natural for me to protect my home. Makarov smiled at that as they were greeted by Urza, Natsu, Happy, Grey, Ur, and the Strauss brothers, who were happy to see Makarov, Lucy, and Kurama doing well. With the intent to kill Gon, the others took a good look at Fox's eyes. Whoa, Fox has eyes, Natsu exclaimed in shock. Yes, Happy exclaimed in shock. Of course he has eyes, Grey said in a deadpan tone. But, weren't they red before? Mirajane stared into her eyes, mesmerized by how blue they were. Excellent work, Fox San, Urza said with a nod. Thanks to you, we have won the war. Don't mention it, Fox said before starting to walk away. Let's get out of here before the explosion goes off. Explosions? Suddenly, the top of the robot exploded, shaking the entire building. As he was boarding the robot, Fox created some shadow clones and sent them to plant explosive seals all over the robot. I guess we were too slow, Fox commented as he blew up another part of the robot. Why the hell did you put explosions? Gray exclaimed as they all ran as fast as they could from the shaking robot. To get rid of this monstrosity, Fox answered as Lucy held on to him as hard as she could to keep from falling. It's not fair. I want to destroy Phantom Lord's guild. Natsu exclaimed. The group then quickly escaped the explosive robot by jumping off of it. His comrades watched as the robot broke away from the explosion, falling to the ground. Everyone was shocked before noticing Makarov next to them, as well as Lucy and Karama. The war is over. Makarov exclaimed loudly. We have won. Once they realized what he had just said, the fairy tale mages suddenly smiled widely before everyone clapped their hands, jumping into the air. Later, the fairy tale members gathered in front of their destroyed guild building, looking sad about the place where they had spent so many years. They won the war, but lost an important battle, protecting their guild. Makarov stood before them, looking sadly at the guild hall he was supposed to protect. He then noticed the sad and guilty look on Lusa's face. There's no need to be sad, Makarov said, still looking around the guild hall, though the sad look on his face is gone. 
The guild halls can be rebuilt. I'm happy that no one was hurt by this foolish war. Lucy still didn't look up, tears appearing in her eyes, feeling responsible for the cause of the war. She felt a hand, causing her to turn around and saw Fox, who had on a spare headband protector, her right arm wrapped in bandages to hide it. This is not your fault, Lucy San, she said in a soothing tone. No one blames you. You're right, Lu Chan, Levy agreed with a small smile. We don't blame you for what happened. Yes, it's not your fault. You're one of us. Of course, we won't let them take you. Yes. She looked at her guildmates, who assured her that they didn't blame her for the disaster that happened. He touched her when she looked at them before starting to cry. They all gathered around her, comforting her. Makarov smiled as he watched them comfort his crying member before looking out into the sunset, basking in the blazing sun of victory. But now, I have to handle the magic council, he thought, sweating. U-W-A-H. M. Master? Urza exclaimed in shock as Makarov cried. What's happening? He's crying tears of joy, Karama said. Enjoy our victory. End chapter 10.